let's begin. So, Misery. You awake to find yourself in a room that is not familiar to you. The floor is covered in snow. Like around the walls worn and battered stone. It's it seems to be some kind of ruined castle, but you have no memory of how you got here or where you've been for the last month or so of your life. Around you in your snow you see you see the familiar form of Darago and two unfamiliar people laying sprawled out in the snow, s- slowly stirring in fo- into wakefulness. But through a hole in the wall, you can see mountains beyond and a snowstorm brewing across across the mountains. But how you got here and where here is, you don't know. But you see, you see the three others slowly, slowly, starting to stir awake. I kick Darago. What would you like to do? Pull my cloak closer around me and start kind of kicking Darago next to me. Hey. Oh, oh. That's a rude awakening. You should be used to that by now. Mm, morning sunshine. Uh, look. Look around us. Where the hell are we? I don't know. And who are they? Mm. Uh, uh, just leave the leave the door shut. We don't need housekeeping this time. It's not not today. Please let me sleep. Something tells me the big one at least doesn't know either. Yeah, I get that feeling. I kick the big one. I don't know. Ooh. Barry. 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 Oh, okay. I'm up. No. I'm up. Okay. All right. So, a couple things worth couple things worth noting. Uh, the beer probably was bad. I, I I know that you said that it was, and I said that it's something we should try. Uh, but uh, anyway, there are two people here, and uh, and you're sleeping in snow. Um, hi, hi. I'm Gable. I sit up. Really... Um. <laughs> Ah, hello, uh, Very. That's Gable, like he said. Right. And do you, do you know where we are? Not I've, a clue. I haven't the faintest. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can you help me up? Ah, uh, he looks at the size of him. He's a big dude. So uh, Gable is about seven foot three. Uh, he is a Goliath, uh, white skin, uh, bald, um, and hairless as they normally are, uh, and. Very well bit, very well built, um, and uh, and and even as uh, even as he reaches his hand up and kind of rests up on his uh, on his back palm to 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 be assisted up, it, it seems like he almost lifts himself up, just just very dexterous and nimble on his feet. And whilst we're at that, seeing as Gable has given us a description, what what do the rest of you look like? What else, what else have we got here in our in our ruined snow-filled castle? What else do we have? Well, Vary now has hit their hair kind of flowing down, platinum green, a kind of platinum blonde, but with green hues. Uh, he is a little bit more spring f- uh, flavored that way. But the only problem is, or not a problem, actually not a problem. Interesting thing, behind both his hands, down his arms, and all the way his back are dragon scales silvery dragon scales that come up with a greenish hue because he is in spring right now. Totally not the same season. He's about 6'2", quite skinny, uh, wearing pretty long, flowy blue robes, and uh, looks like he just woke up, so. Miziri is, um, she's a drow. She has very dark skin and very light hair, um, kind of that silvery white blonde that you see girls doing these days. Um, she's tall and slender. She's wearing 
full leather armor from head to toe. Like her legs, body, arms, everything is like leather armor all the way through. And she has a cloak, a long cloak down her back. And her eyes are very piercing, violet colored eyes. Um, Dargo is a human, the only human here, uh, with brown hair, cut very short, um, brown eyes. Uh, he's kind of skinny build. Um, he has leather, not leather armor to the extent of Miziri, just enough to be protective. But under that, he's got, you know, just a blue shirt and some pants. And uh, he, he honestly, he, he's got kind of a smirk on his face. He looks a little shifty. Um, why are you smirking, little man? <laughs> Do you know why we're here? I have no idea why we're here. That's just his face. Well, I'm just pleased to be in such good company. Well, as you say this, Darago, and coming to wakefulness and seeing these strange and unfamiliar faces around here, like Missouri, you have no memory of where you've been for the last month of your life. But you do know that in your hand, you're holding a crumpled and slightly damp scroll of paper. Hmm. He will unfold it and take a look at it. So the paper, the paper reads, so it says, <clears throat> The Lord's Council of Arendelle does hereby promise to pay 2,000 gold pieces to Miziri, Darago, Veyer, and Gable in return for the slaying of the White Dragon of Castle Veyer. It's a very formal, curlicued writing. The seal at the bottom. Right. And a bit of ribbon attached. And, it, and it, the, the handwriting and everything does look authentic to me. If, I mean, it looks fancy. Well, but, uh, so I, I'm, I'm proficient in calligrapher's tools, so I have a little knowledge of, like, handwriting. Does it look official? It looks very official. Okay. Is that your doctor's note? Oh, what you got? Uh, Did you bring enough I, for the, the group? Am, well, that's a good question. Am I the only one with one of these? He looks to uh, Missouri in particular. Since uh, he was also mentioned on it. Apparently. What is it? He kind of shows it to her. She'll take it and read it to herself. The Lord's Council of Arendelle does bloody 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 yeah, white dragon bloody bloody blah seal. Right, so I think since we're all stuck in this situation, I should we should probably share information that we mm. get. Something like mm. that you note. Know, uh, apparently we need to kill a dragon. Or maybe we already did. I oh. I can't remember. Maybe yeah. kind of looks at his own maybe skin and he's like, what type of dragon? Uh, a white one? He mm -hmm. kind of looks at his like kind of silvery scales and he's like, oh, well, that's very, very convenient. It's not you, is it? No, no, I'm, I'm a Ladrin, mostly. It's just, I have a little bit extra. He's not a dragon. He's not a dragon. I've seen him. I've seen him. We've taken baths together. We've known okay. each other for a couple months. Well, I've learned a little too <laughs> much. What? Hey. Hmm. Well, looks like somebody wants us to kill a dragon, and they're willing to pay a pretty penny for it. So that's How the much? thing, though. Did we actually kill the dragon? I don't kill remember. The I don't remember that. We don't okay. remember anything. Right. Okay, so let's let's assume, let's assume, going on what we remember... Have any of you killed a dragon ever? Okay, all right. So that means that means that we get to kill a dragon and then make money for it. Ooh, glory, the pride, the honor. Go ahead, breathe, 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 breathe. As much as I like the money part of that sentence, uh, I'm a little sketchy on whether the four of us can really kill a dragon. I'm also a bit concerned that this piece of paper has all of our names written on it, and we have no clue what's going on. 
what's DM, what's around us? Uh, Vary's going to just start while the conversation is kind of just start looking around besides just the snow. Okay, so the room you're in, the floor is covered in snow. The walls are stone. There is a massive hole in one wall, which gives a view of this mountainous landscape and a very, very steep drop down. (laughs) And there is also one door, which is this worn worn wooden door with sort of rusted bolts and metal leading out of this room but looking upwards you can see the upper floor appears to have partially collapsed and some of the like timbers and stonework from above have collapsed down into the room you're now in but well judging by the landscape that we're in very pretty well yeah and my knowledge, of course, I think we're near the dragon, regardless of whether we not, or not we killed it. White dragons are known for more cold areas. So is Gable. <laughs> right, right, Gable. Is he talking about himself in the third person? Yes. He might yes. be. <laughs> I think he was making a joke. We should probably get out of this room. Agreed. As long as we're exploring, who wants to take point? Not it. I will, of course. Viri, you stay behind me. Young lady, Miseri. Is that your name right? Misery? Miseri. Would you like some company? (laughs) Oh, this door, it's tiny. For a larger man like me, I will still open it and try to duck my head through it. Try and impress Miziri as I as I lower my head to show how large I am and tall and impressive. Okay, so as you reach as you reach for this door, it's it appears to be jammed and rusted shut with with age and sort of time. And if you would like to open it, Gable, please give me the first roll of this evening and make me a strength check, right. please. I'd love to. It, w- w- would it help him at all if I took the crowbar out of my burglar's pack and uh, it would not. To him? It would not. It would insult me. Oh, okay. Plus, um, I'm going to stand back a little bit. Um, all right. So Gable has a whopping, um, oh boy, strength plus six. He's got a plus six in strength. So please, uh, do you want just strength, straight strength? It is a dirty 20 for the night. Let's go. Blessings. <laughs> 30, 20. So, so slamming your weight into this door, you watch as the timbers and frosted rust burst apart and this door collapses into splinters and... <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Very, did you see that? I, I nearly knocked it off the hitches on the first try. <laughs> Very impressive. You must have a lot of experience with kicking indoors. Thank you. Right. And it reveals beyond, like, a continuation of, like, another room. Again, on the left-hand side is just a broken-apart wall. Like, there's a massive, like, gaping hole, and the floor sort of lend- ending in sort of broken splinters. And you can see this several hundred feet drop down sheer, steep, frozen mountainside into sort of darkness and doom beyond. That's to your left. Um, to your right, you can see uh, two doors, like one immediately and then one a little further ahead. And straight ahead, you can see that while the floor is broken away, over a brief gap, it continues in another room. It's just like whatever building or place you're in, a large proportion of it has crumbled and collapsed away into whatever lies beneath. Hmm. Architecture looks nice. It's so pretty. Hmm. That's very far down. All yes. right. Uh, Your sorry to interrupt. Tis, uh, Lee needs you to give him view on the I have map. done that. I have done that. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Um, uh, it is amazing. This is um, very right. steep. Mm. We're going the other way. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Love it. 
I'm going to, I'm going to like try to turn Gable to look at the doors. Well, all oh, right. Which one do you think is better? Anybody? The nearest one. And I, I walk towards it. Okay. Uh, so. Maybe we shouldn't just go busting down all the doors. I look at Beery like. So um, as you walk towards the nearest door, like, are you stopping? Yes. I'm not stopping him. I have, stopping st- him. I have stopped short of it. Yes. If I he heard. stops, I'm going to go inspect the door just to see if I can get it open normally. Okay. I mean, if you're expect- inspecting it, make me an investigation check. Uh-huh. Door inspection. Exciting. Door you can inspection. use your shoulder. You can use your shoulder if, it, if it's rusted. That will be... Let's see. Investigation is uh, 14. I mean, point one, it is a door. Mm. Point two, it is, it doesn't appear locked as such. It just appears, again, rusted and sort of decayed. Like, this door has not been opened in a long, long time. Mm. You can put your shoulder into it. Like the lock sort of rusting away, the bolt starting to rust, and the door itself, the timber starting to starting to decay. I'm I'm it, gonna lean in and like pretty close and be like, Well, any any traps? Anything like that? Nothing that I see. Now if if we busted through the door, would it cause any kind of like structural collapse or something like that? It's gonna have repercussions for the ceiling above us um probably not unless you really rammed it too hard like as long as you're careful it's a real danger as long as you're careful the ceiling probably won't fall in on your head if like, you don't want to do like, it i'll i'll rent five percent sure that the ceiling won't fall on your head if you break this door down how about i take this one big guy just give me a second um, I'm going to take my crowbar out and, and try and just like ease the door open a little bit. All right. So easing the door with your crowbar, like, mm, make me, make me a strength check at, at advantage. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good because, uh, leverage, leverage. That's good. Important. Yeah. It's good because I have a minus one of strength checks. All right. Here we go. Mm. That's a six. That's not going to do it. And now, uh, thirteen. Ah, thirteen just about does it. Like it, it takes you longer than you'd like, especially with people watching. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother had a crowbar. She used it like that. <laughs> like, but with a bit of wiggling around and just like readjusting it to find the right angle and going. Ah, no, I'll try this again. Sort of a different angle. The door cracks open. And beyond it, you see a room that doesn't appear to go anywhere. Like the right hand side of it, again, completely broken and splintered away. Other than that, there's no doors. It just appears to be an empty, snow filled, dusty, empty room. Well, war time, wouldn't you say? It's a closet. It's a big yes, closet. It, that is what it would appear to be. Mm. I, I'll go open the next closet door. Next, I, I, I hustle over and uh, and uh, I, I I make it look like I'm I'm doing the same kind of inspection that I saw uh, Dergo do, and uh, I'm like, mm, yeah, structurally sound. Um, mm, uh, and then I go and just like uh, uh, make it look like I'm like inspecting that just put my shoulder into it anyway. Okay, opening this one. Like this one doesn't appear to be very very jam shut. You open it, it's about 10 feet long, five feet wide. It is a cupboard. Hmm, okay, all right. An empty cupboard. Ah, cupboard, now we're making progress. Well, the rooms are getting smaller. That's fun. We're gonna get trapped in a very small room. That's my worst fear. Next to being a small room. Okay, calm down. Everything's going to be fine. 
doesn't really make that much sense all the time. It's it's okay. Gable, breathe. Mm-hmm. Breathe. Oh, wait. Your ideas. Very, you're smart. Do it. No, make a smart. I'm not. <laughs> um, I just want to get out of here. How about we try to move somewhere? Does anybody have any rope or anything? Yes, I've got some rope. Um, uh, I'm going to go up to that, that part, like right in the front, where there there is kind of like a broken edge to it. But it, is there any other way, like outside of the cliff, that we I can see? There's I mean, any other... looking ahead, you figure as long as you're not really, really unlucky or clumsy, that like you're fairly sure you could get across to the next room, unless unless you're like, you know. One in twenty, really unlucky. Like you should be fine. This is not a problem at all. Oh, right, right. I, I love how far is the, how far is the jump? Like the jump to like a solid ground. I mean, the jump to solid ground is only like ten feet or so. It's just it's just very icy because. So it, you figure you could definitely do it like nineteen out of twenty times. Hmm. I would like to. I take. My, I'm, I'm already taking my rope. I'm, I'm taking my rope and I'm like tying it underneath my like. Uh, uh, it, it, it's kind of going like underneath my my tunic and coming up and underneath, so it looks like I'm tying it around like my my, my groin and my my hips and around my waist. And I, I I'm a uh, limbering up, and I uh, I just take like a couple step and I, I just uh, um, as, as I'm running by, I kind of like throw my the the one the other end of the rope towards Barry, uh, and I just like take it and run and, and go for it. All right, make me an athletics check. I'm just kind of like, why did he throw this rope at me? <laughs> 16 plus 9, a, a, and stick the landing at, at, at a uh, <laughs> 25. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not difficult at all. Like, why did you, like... Well, now you have a rope. <laughs> yep. I was like, okay, that's good. Gable? I, I kind of lean back against the near wall and just try to, like, just in case they need to fall onto something and they've got a rope to cling onto. I'm just going to hold onto the rope and, and go over and then turn to the other two. You coming? Ladies off first. We go. So I'll take off. And just yep. No rope, just do it. All right, we come make on. me that athletics check. Real quick, DM, should we put our tokens on the board? If you have one, that would be delightful. If I do a fancy flip, can it be acrobatics? <laughs> this is an athletics check. <laughs> We're in trouble. Mm. That's a nine. You're fine. This is not how, I mean, you don't do it with anywhere as near as much style and like effortless grace as Gable, but you make it. Like, there's only a little bit of skidding. You're across. Safe and mostly sound. Vary and there I go. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm just going to hold on to Gable's rope very carefully, get up to the... over to the side. Well, I've got my own rope. Um... Uh, is there any, you know, is there any chance that I could hitch a ride with the uh, other two who are going on on that rope? I'm just gonna hold up, hold up like a, a bunch of the rope and just be like, yep. "Okay, don't mind if I do." I just continue on with it, with the rope, and yeah, I don't know why it's. I'm trying to drag my character car- token. Yeah, please, please stop. There's like I can see like 17 of them. <laughs> okay, then I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no idea what weird technical glitches are occurring, but I can just see a pile of tokens just slowly growing higher and higher. <laughs> but no, it's and, fine. Like so, uh, Mike, just, Michael Chan, uh, are you zoomed in? Do you see black? <laughs> no. Are you zoomed I don't in? See do, do you see? Do you see the bottom left where there's actually like you see that right? I see everything. Yeah, I see everything. <laughs> No, no, I see the part that that, that she revealed. Okay. Mm. I have no idea what's going on, but just, I don't know, 
We'll just squiggle we'll on that where you are. We'll work it out when we get a break. And that, I, don't, that's okay. like, I don't know what the technical that's issue is, but we'll work it out. Draw a little you said athletics check, right? Athletics check? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's an athletics check. Straight 10. It's a flat 10. Ooh. A 10? Yeah, I mean, slightly better than Missouri, actually, despite everything. Like, athletics. But you make it across. We have You're practicing to make sure you know how your dice work. All right. That is also a nine. You make it across like, Gable, other people just don't have your style. Like, they can make it across this gap, but just, just, just lacking in the <laughs> gap. Yeah, crossing gaps isn't my area of expertise, I'm afraid. But, but oh, it's more fa- this, this, this is just piles of tokens, tokens everywhere. It's really uh, uh, It's because your map is on the, um, the token layer, so our stuff is hiding underneath it instead of on the map layer. Our tokens are sitting beneath it. No, no, no. My map is on the map layer. Then we're screwed. We're screwed. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yes. okay. Um, but right. yes, they, you make it across this, this this horrendous yes. like seven foot gap that's not really a challenge at all. But sh- you grandly and heroically make it across this vast, vast divide. Oh. And you find on the other side that you're still in frost covered, icy, snowy castle. Hmm. And ahead of you, there is a door. I'm proud of all of you. You are good companions to have. And uh, the way you jump gonna, is incredible. I'm going to pat Gable on the back. He's like, yeah, we, we okay, yeah. Right. Okay. Door, door. Door, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> I go and me and uh, finagle that door. Okay, you're going for this door. I Just am. plowing your way through it? Hell yeah. All right, so you slam your way into this door. Make me an athletic check. This is the season of athletic checks. This is mainly for just narration. A 19 plus 9, a 28. Just keep cooking. So, Give me an athletic check. I'm doing it. You slam your way through this door and you hear as you slam through the door, this startled <laughs> from the other side of it. <laughs> and you find yourself face to face with the most terrified goblin you have ever seen in your life. <laughs> it's like staring at you with a crossbow out. Yeah, I'm looking down at it. I, I, I get down like on like knees because uh, how, how tall is it? like three, f- four feet tall? Like definitely less than four. It's like a three foot tall goblin. This is a midget I goblin. Crouch, is I crouch goblin. all the way down. And as I do that, I go, it's a little one. Hey, I'm Gable. Don't move. Stay right there. Who are you? What are you doing in our <laughs> castle? Your castle? Oh, I'm sorry. Castle. Oh, does he speak common? He speaks common. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Wonderful. Maybe this is a great opportunity. Listen, um, okay. could you tell us where we are? Uh, Dargo asks, walking up and crouching down. You're in our castle. Like, you're in the, you, you came out of the spare bit of our castle that we don't use because it keeps falling down. Castle Vare. Like, where have you come from? Castle Vare? Vare. 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 I don't know, I look it's selfish. I look, I look at Viri. I'm like, is this your house? <laughs> Similar. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, hey, little one. Nice to meet you. I'm Gable. These are my adventure companions. They're very nimble on their feet. Athletic. <laughs> to, uh, mm, Stay back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> what, 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 where do you put that? Uh, easy does it. Easy does it. I just take my hand and kind of like put, put it away. I go, hey, uh, there, is there a dragon nearby? Because we've been uh, uh, tasked, tasked to do that. And uh, um We'd like to get away from the crumbling area because it's really far down. And uh, uh, if you could help, that'd be there's nice. no dragons here. There's no dragons here. Well, okay. There's could been no push? dragons here for a long time. Long, long time. Great. Can you push, Mi- I, I push. I continue to push the crossbow down. Just set it down, young miss. Yeah, miss. Please lower. Please lower your crossbow. Oh, no. That would be for the best. Okay. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> okay. What is your name? Mm. Nip it. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nip. Yeah. Uh, um. Nice to meet you, Nippet. Um. The uh. The, the how many of their of of your friends are also here too? I'd like to know that first. Lots and lots. So many. Hundreds. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Whoa. Hundreds and hundreds. Whoa. Mighty army. Okay. We are a mighty goblin, uh, goblin army. Okay, the more the more she talks, uh, the more... Is he telling the truth? Or she? Or whatever. <laughs> Make an inside check. Inside yeah, check. I, I would like to do that. Please. Um, let's see. Natural 20 and plus 5 is 25. There I go. This goblin is the shittiest liar you've ever come across. There are not a <laughs> hundred goblins in a goblin army in this castle. You don't know exactly how many goblins are, there are, but you suspect it's significantly less than a hundred. And this goblin is shit scared at the moment. Um, I'm going to walk. Here. I'm going to slowly. Listen. Walk. Okay. I'm going to try and talk reason to you. N Nip it, was it? Nip there it. are four of us. And mm -hmm. this guy is the size of about 20 of you. Uh, if we wanted to kill you, we already would have. So please just lower your crossbow mm -hmm. and we can be reasonable about this. <laughs> Make an intimidation Make check, please. Damn it. All right. mm -hmm. 17. Mm -hmm. It drops the crossbow. So I, I'm going to thank you. Kind of, I'm going to put my like, kind of like Neil, get down on like one knee to to, to look the Bro, goblin like down. Guys. We could, we could totally be, definitely all of us be friends. Where are your friends? Can everybody could make friends here, right? And then we could figure out why us four, we're here. Mm -hmm. We could probably get out of your castle quicker. While he's saying all this, Make Missouri has sweet. not crouched down. Mm -hmm. She's standing up and looking very like ominous and menacing and not like she wants to be friends at all. That's a 22. Damn, you guys packed the, <laughs> you packed the social skills. Okay. Right. Yeah, well, someone said I want a balcony. And you see, it's going to go, mm, look. I take you to visit my people, but first, three promises. Okay. One. We'll be friends forever. One, you do not eat goblins. I'm going to look at Gable and be like, we'll be fine. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I it, it sits on, it doesn't sit right with him, but. Mm. You do not eat goblins. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. You drive a hard bargain, but I suppose. Really tough thing to say, but yeah. Two. Two. You do not slaughter goblin village and burn us to the ground. That's okay. that's two rules right there. But I will absolutely that. not slaughter and burn your village to the ground. Mm, not slaughter and. <laughs> Those two specific things will not be done in tandem. I can assure you of that. <laughs> I'm gonna like slowly turn and be like, "Sure, yes, we could agree to do that." What he just said. Three, three. Nippet cannot remember what a three was supposed to be, so we'll stick with two rules for now. Okay. Excellent. Great. Go ahead, Devin. You lead the way. I will bring you to the Great Goblin King. Which what? The Great Goblin King. Okay. This way. And Lepit leads you through into the central courtyard of this castle. Again, the snow-filled central courtyard with um, dead trees standing central to it. And then through a little further into what appears to be some kind of grand hall. So it's directly ahead of you, you can see the start of what appears to be a bridge heading out over this vast chasm that surrounds this castle. And off around several hundred meters in the distance, you can see the other half of this bridge broken off up on the other side of this vast chasm. With a clear sign saying, there is no one shot over here. Do not go over here. <laughs> Pins onto oh. it. Oh, that's very, <laughs> across that's the, very across the deep, Across the deep and cavernous void. 
I'm just gonna stare at it and be like, <laughs> under construction, let's go. <laughs> and, but other than that, you see this courtyard, drifts of snow piled up against rubble, um, fallen debris, and this this tent, and a group of, in, an increasingly growing group of startled and worried looking goblins sort of scurrying out from nearby doorways and sort of like staring at you and you hear Nepic I'm gonna like smile and wait all of them. And unless any of you speak goblin? Nope. No. Okay. Unintelligible gobbledygook. As far as you're concerned. Exchange between these various goblins along with lots of hand gestures like Yeah, I'm just going to continue waving at everybody. This is great. We are being very well received. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great turnout for this event. Um, I was not expecting a crowd, but I am always expecting a crowd. As this goblin crowd grows to it, at least at this point, it's like, you know, about a dozen goblins gathered around in various states of worry. <laughs> Leader of the tribes of goblins, we hear there are hundreds of you. I understand we must be meeting with the generals. Um, it's a great honor, and thank you for having us in your home. Uh, we are happy to take oh. meeting with the Goblin King. The Goblin King will come. Booyah, booyah, booyah. Oh, oh yeah. And you hear this slow chant to take him. Booyah, booyah, booyah. Taken up among the goblins, and people start like slamming crossbow butts onto the ground and sort of clapping along. And goblins seem quite excited about something. My my club is tapping, a little off beat, but yeah, he's got it. And a moment later, the flap of this tent in this frosted courtyard swings open, and you see a goblin. I mean, they're not any taller or, or grander than the rest of the goblins, but they're holding themselves a little prouder. They've got a staff in one hand and this crown made of sort of bits of splinters of timber and bone mm -hmm. and also like what appear to be like peach flowers, like strung around this crown mm. in a circlet. And this goblin stands up to its full, impressive, like almost four foot height, puffs out its goblin chest. <clears throat> and the goblin next to it says, You are addressing the king of Vea Castle. Dargo Your takes man. a knee. Uh, I, I sweep my, my head down and, and, and back up, look down at, at Dargo, and then take a knee. I'll take a like a very deep bow, and then just continue standing afterwards. I give a slight nod. <laughs> <laughs> so, goblin voices are going to get increasingly silly. So, <laughs> welcome to Castle Vaya. Oh yeah, you to my kingdom. Ah. You know, you recognize what I am. Booyah, booyah, booyah. Oh yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Where do you come from? North of here. North? South, south, Gable. South? south. Much further the south. So, of so north. north that you're so no, well so north that you come back south. That's um, okay. Mm -hmm. All the way around. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, so uh, that's thank cool. you for uh, that's treating us. Uh, thank you. Thank you for treating uh, us. We have important matters. They are to list a few. Show them the, Dargo, show them the, show them the letter. <sighs> I'm not convinced that they can read, Gable, but I will read it to them. Mm. So he does read it aloud. Um, hmm. That is most odd. We do not have a dragon here. So we've been told. We have not had a dragon here for a hundred years. Mm. Are you sure you didn't just miss it? 
Mm, it, it could be hiding. Something. And he, he sort of pushes through the crowd of goblins around and points to, and like, says, clear the snow, clear the snow. Behold, the skull of the dragon of Castle Vale. Standing, standing up five feet so, taller than all the other goblins. Like A group of goblins sort of start burrowing away at the snow drift and sort of piling snow to side, from side to side until they uncover what to your untrained eyes appears to be the skull of a dragon. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Goblin King. Uh, I have a question. Yes? I don't actually know that they would know this, but do you know what year it is? Mm. It is the year 100 since the slaying of the dragon of Castlevania. That is excellent. That is all that is from the slaying of the castle, the dragon of Castlevania. For once upon a time, this our nation of goblins was terrorized by a horror from the skies. Oh. And then there came four great heroes that slew the dragon. Oh. And Sorry, but you said that was a. You said that was 100 years ago, right? Oh, yes, yes. Long, long ago. Many, many generations. Like, my great, 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 great. Great, great, great grandfather goblin beheld goblin. the heroes in their deeds. A lot of greats. Yes. Oh, okay. Great. I think hey. I might have missed the great. Hey, Darago, uh, there yes. was a seal on that letter, wasn't it? I, I don't know if this guy will be able to tell us anything, but maybe if you show it to him, he might recognize it. <sighs> he shows that. Uh, in the seal. Do you recognize this seal? Nope. <laughs> nope. Means nothing to me. Well, I'm, um, not no, I'm more concerned about the slaying of the dragon. You mentioned four great heroes? Oh, yes, yes. Great, great heroes. Well, what do you know about those heroes? Know? Well, I, I am not much of a storyteller, but have, there was oh, one who was the height of 10 goblins with the uh, strength of 20 goblins. Oh, he sounds great. And tear a dragon limb from limb with his... Yeah, I wish I could. That's why I'm looking for one, so I could try. Yeah. There was a master of magics with the wings of a dragon and the scales of a dragon and the head of a dragon, but it was not a dragon, but it was also like a magic non-dragon person who did magic. Very. Did you hear that? It could be related. Then mm. there was a dark and sinister bringer of death who slipped from shadow to shadow. Oh. That doesn't sound like anyone I know, does, does it? And then the dragon does went, it? yeah! And died. Whoa. And then there was some guy that did some stuff. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. I hate him I already. Heard, yeah, you're pretty good at stories. I mean, like if the whole King thing doesn't work out, you do it really well. But oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so does it have any kids or baby dragons? Oh. I uh, real quick, real quick. Let's, okay. let's can we? Talk amongst yourselves in private, really quick. I was just um, thinking that myself. I'm yeah. gonna pull out my swords and see if there's anything on them. There's any blood or debris, like old grossness. Okay, so you pull out your sword, and like it seems like fairly clean. Like most responsible people clean their swords a bit before they put them away, but there's definitely. There's definitely a trace of some blood on that sword. Hmm. So, so sorry, Goblin King. Let us talk very, very quickly amongst ourselves. And Wait, we'll get without right me? Back. Um, unfortunately, yes. There's just a little bit of tidbits that we oh, gotta... Fine, fine. Oh. No, 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 it's it's not you. It's It's us. <laughs> really, really. Just, he seems he seems nice. All right, so hey, what are you doing? Don't be drawing your stories in front of the kings. Uh, I'm, I've never met one, this. but I can only clean that. What? Ooh, oh, you should put you should clean that for. I always clean it. 
Gable, do you live more than a hundred years? I do. Well, oh, I, guess, I, do. I don't. Mm, okay, oh, so very we could oh. definitely rule out that we were asleep for a hundred years, but maybe that because I'm thinking we're in the future, a hundred years in the future. It, oh well. my God! I better not meet my grandmother. This is how. I don't think we ever existed. Uh, your years. grandmother would be in the past. Not that's what I was. That's the thing I was worried about. This is all new territory. Okay. Okay. I hope you didn't have any children. Uh, me uh, too. <laughs> well, if you lived hundred years, then they're probably still around. If you did, so. That means we're either we were in stasis for a hundred years and we're in a new era and congratulations, we can start anew. Or we're stuck here from something else. Some magical teleportation. Mm. Uh, magic is not something I'm familiar with. <sighs> really? Oh, well. Yeah. Surprising, I know. So, then here is the question to all of you. Would you like to go back? Or just live in a new era? It's kind of cold. You're here. discussing time travel. We, well, that's what happened here. Or well, that's, I don't usually consider sleep to be time travel. And here's the thing. Where are we? Not just when. I and, don't recognize this place. And how are we? Who are That's, we? How are we what? Yep. Here. You know, that actually made sense. Yeah. That's a, it's a good why. question, actually. That actually Very poignant. Ah, oh, um, thanks. Good, good job for that one. Uh, thanks, bud. Yeah, um, so... From what the goblins said, we slayed the dragon already. We didn't get paid because we were stuck here well, for a hundred years. We got swindled. Mm. A little switcheroo. The old, the old hundred year time switcheroo. We're going to find who did this and I'm going to slit his throat. Wow. Oh, great. There's violent. Um, that's. We really keep interesting company. I'm like looking. You're the you're the, fir you're the first tribe I've ever met. I hope this doesn't inform any of my future and uh, encounters or perceptions of an entire race of people. Well, making assumptions about entire races of people isn't a great idea, is it? Oh, don't judge Miziri too harshly. You know, she has a rough exterior, but inside she's, well, also, also cold as iron. But still, we love her. Right. Yeah. So. um Okay, so I turn I turn over my shoulder. Is there a, like a, a crowd of goblins just kind of like awaiting? Like, yeah, like, yeah. There is. A, so you form this sort of this form this huddle, and sort of a few paces away, there's this expectant kind of goblins just sort of leaning in and just like watching you intently. And they're kind of some of them have already got the crossbows out and they're pointing them at you, sort of like speculatively, like. And when they tell you, just no. A no crossbows here. So they seem nice. Should we ask about any like magical items and yeah, orbs and portals and gates and whatnot? Yeah. Well, and that part of the castle we woke up in seems like they haven't been there in a long time. I wonder if they closed it off for a reason. Mm. Mm. The fact that it's crumbling means that it whatever we're looking for might be down in the ravine somewhere. I'm not really one for the planning. I just like to go where everybody else kind of wanders. So if anybody thinks of a plan, if you want to all go back or continue on, it doesn't matter to me. I think I, first of all, first things first, we need to find out exactly what has happened to us. Do okay. you think goblins have historians? <laughs> <laughs> Worth asking. Uh, your majesty. Sir. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, Booyah. yes. Do you have any? Booyah, you said Booyah, you're Booyah. not. You Booyah. said you are not especially Booyah. okay. Let's let's give let's put the booyahs on hold, please. You you said that you are not Booyah. the best at telling stories, but do you have any historians among you who would be able to tell us more about this uh, this battle with the dragon? We have Tassie you... the Ancient. Tassie the Ancient has lived a long, long time. Wow. A hundred years, a long time? Three decades has Tassie the wow. Ancient lived. Oh, wow. Everybody. Older right. than any Very other nice. goblin recorded in our tribe. Very wow. Yeah. Do you like to yeah. absorb the wisdom of the ancient goblin? Like a sponge. We will call upon right. her. Tassie. Sure. Tassie the Ancient. Every... Or just any I mean, old Tassie. We have like three different Tassies. There's Tassie the Ancient, Tassie the Younger, and Tassie the Idiot. Oh, but let's avoid the idiot and get the yeah. ancient one. Ah, yes. Yeah. We have enough idiots already. Huh. I agree. I love Gable. <laughs> Everybody looks at Cable. <laughs> hey. Oh. Right. Doesn't he just he just straight faces it? <laughs> All right. Hey, I, I, what? I like I, I like it it's when you guys just look at me. It looks at me. He likes the attention. It's fine. Anyways, Someone fetch Tassie. Well, at least we're thirty years closer from the hundred years off. Hopefully. Okay. So, moments later, you see this hunch. This hunched little goblin, like goblins are small to start with, but this goblin is smaller, hunched over, small in frame, leaning on a stick, sort of slowly making their way towards you, pauses for a moment. Do you think this is the one? I think that's Stop very likely, it. Gable, yes. Mm. Mm. Strangers have come here from a strange land. Sure, let's call it that. Sure we have. Yeah, we have. And from the land of plenty, have you? Land, land of what now? The land of plenty. 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 Yes, a land of what? plenty, especially compared to this, at least. I, I suppose, yes. So, we were... We were told that you held more knowledge of what happened here, probably, a hundred years ago, slaying the great dragon. Oh, I didn't slay any dragons. Oh, yes. I, I know you did. What a relief. What? My great, 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 great. goblin. Witness this? Oh, for? yes, yes, yes. We goblins, and, and we, don't, we don't usually live very long. Lots of things kill goblins. Like, what's your I secret? Mean, up, up here, up here is safe. Up here, up here, our guardians oh. keep us safe. The, the guardian. protection of the castle of Air keeps us safe. I, I've heard word from goblins down in the lowlands. Have you any idea how hard it is being a goblin down in the lowlands? They establish I a cave can't. next week. A bunch of people turn up, kill all the goblins in the cage. It's like, a... uh, no I'm goblins. Gonna look at my again, again, again. Just looking, looking for gold and like. Can't imagine I mean, it. Kind of Listen, this, this is this is a charming now. conversation, Tassie. Wow. But uh... hiding a club behind my back, like. Can you we tell us more? If you are... to establish a goblin colony these days. It's just too many. I, 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 I'm, I, I sympathize. I deeply sympathize. I do. <laughs> but we, we would like to know if your great, 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 great grand goblin uh, told you anything about about uh, the battle of the four heroes and the dragon a hundred years ago. Oh, well, it's a mighty tale, but uh, it's a long story. But the, do you want the short version or the long version? Let's go with the short version. Long version. You know, I no, would like okay. to hear the long version. I would like to hear the medium version. Okay, that's good. That's good compromise, Mizir. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. I okay. what I need come right on, now. Come on. Sit down. Someone get some. We'll, we'll head over. We'll get you some nice soup in you. Some nice warming soup, and you can hear yeah. the medium version of this story. So, I come, soup. Come, come, follow me. Follow me. And okay. Cassie ushers you through one of the doors into what appears to be a room that has been converted into a goblin encampment and there's boxes and barrels around and tents of this settlement and in the center of it a big cauldron with some kind of soup and stew being stirred up in it and a goblin leaning over like Tassie beckons over to that goblin and they spoon out and hand you each a bowl of this steaming stew. Ooh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. I, I right. sniff it suspiciously. Mm, this is uh, nice. So. De definitely sniffing it suspiciously as yeah. well. Okay, those of you who are sniffing soup suspiciously, make me a perception check. Those of you who are drinking your soup willingly? Yeah. That is 22. Suspicious. 17. And Missouri? 16. Okay. All three of you, this is this is not for start, this is not a good smelling soup. Like this this is made of like all sorts from bits of dried root to uh, I'd like, like more please. Like goblin boots to perhaps and especially Darago with your very perceptive senses potentially just bits of other goblins like i promised that i wouldn't eat other goblins unfortunately so i i'm afraid i'm honor bound not to consume this stew i will set oh. it aside oh yes yes no do, do you say that out loud? no goblins do for you yes if, if he says that out loud i'm like oh that, if that's the case yeah that um i'm I, i'm honor bound by the same same uh, promise. Um, Recycling I, is important. <laughs> that it is. Now, once upon a time, long, long ago, hundred years ago, the goblins here lived in fear of the great terror, the white dragon of Castle Vale. We cowered amidst the ruins of this castle as it swooped from above, bringing death and destruction to all the dead, peer their heads above their holes. And then, seemingly from nowhere, they came, four heroes bearing with them a writ that they held high to the sky, and they slew the dragon. And then they went beyond the land of plenty to rest forever in the eternal guardian lap to bask in their goodness and generosity as as we as goblins benefit from their generosity and thus the, the four heroes passed from this world and were never ever seen again they passed from this world can you be can you give more more details on that part yeah, of the part of the long version now i understand why you wanted that yeah I, i'm actually more curious about this guardian the guardians, the guardians protect Vaya. They give us plenty. They help feed us when winters are harsh. They bring us food. Here, would you like a peach? Yes, Where? thank you. There oh, you go. oh. Um, hmm. okay. But what are they, aside from being guardians? They are beings of great wonder and beauty and endless generosity. They're these... These are very I've never met term. them. Where did they come from? Did oh, they grow up one now. day? Mm -hmm. They dwell in the land beyond, in the land of plenty. If you wish to speak with them, you must pass through the gateway. Where's the gateway? Where is that? Oh, down, down that corridor, through the kitchen. And oh. uh, if you just go through the kitchen, straight on, um, just the, the first door straight on. That, the, the, through there, you'll find the way to the land of plenty. We keep it locked because we don't, because young goblins had a habit of going there and they never come back. Yeah, That's fine. That. Could we have a key or am I going to have to push it down? It? Oh, no, no, please, Not that. please don't smash our doors down. It's really hard for it. There'll be no smashing of doors. We, we wouldn't dream of doing it in this castle anywhere. Just 
let's let's open the door for us to inspect, please. Oh, I mean, yes. Um, you you wish to, to pass beyond to the land of plenty, well, from whence none return. Uh, yes, sounds great. Yeah. thank you. That'd be lovely. Oh, okay. That... Well, we I mean, we don't get many visitors here. Full stop. But we definitely get not get any visitors that want to go there. Very kind. This soup is incredible. My nephew. That's your nephew. Your nephew is in the soup, or your nephew made the soup? Oh, that's a good question. In the soup. I, I don't. Oh. Lovely. <laughs> we better get out of here. Gable's already broken rule number one. Flint. Let's go. Come along, come along, my dears. I, I let I let I let him guide me by the hand. <laughs> and this this hunch. Little goblin starts moving at an incredibly painfully slow pace down out. She gave us the direction, right? Yes. I'm just gonna go there. Okay, so moving on ahead of Tassie the the ancient, you pass through. You pass through a small room that appears to be laid out as a goblin sleeping chamber, and then pass through the goblin kitchen. Slash slaughterhouse slash right. mortuary. As oh. as we pass through this place, I'm just gonna turn to Gable and be like, "How did nephew taste, by the way?" Like cousin. Uh, all right, Goliath. Fuck. <laughs> I'm just gonna continue. <laughs> and leads you up to a door. He goes. I won't go any further than this. It's dangerous. Do you have the key? Take the key. Take the key. What you do now is in your own hands. Whoever the hell you are. Just leave us alone. Well, that conversation changed quickly. Uh, Uh, Dergo, you're uh, you're coming in broken right now. So whatever you just said after they gave us a key, we didn't get. So, uh, so, okay. um, I take the key and I hand it off to... uh, uh, is it shiny? You you muted. Sorry, of course yeah. I muted. I'm always muted. That's the rule of life. And um, the key is quite shiny, actually. It's a silver I, I, key. It's got. I look, I look at Viri for and a moment, and then feel, feeling Viri's eyes on me, and not not giving it to Mizir, I turn and hand it off to Viri. Well, shall we? I am going to unlock the door. With right. the key. Yeah. Door unlocks. And beyond, you see another room of this castle. And the room, as with the rest of the rooms on this side of the castle, this room is mostly intact in that it has a roof, it has all of its walls, it doesn't have any gaping holes leading into chasms. This is a this is a pretty solid room with some packing crates and boxes and barrels in it. But the most notable feature of this room is in the center of it, inscribed in the floor. Because carved into the center of the floor of this room is a circle. A circle of runes that is glowing, definitely glowing. And as your eyes lock onto this circle, I need every one of you to make me a wisdom saving throw, please. And Vary, Uh, Vary, I'd like you to make yours at disadvantage, please. Great, great. For unspecified (laughs) reasons. (laughs) <laughs> That's a three and a three. So, which disadvantage did you want again? Three or the three? Three sounds like a good number. I like the number three. Awesome. Yeah, three it is. Woo! And so the high rolls. Okay, so we have a three from Vari. Missouri? Six. Oh, oh, a six from Missouri? Uh, Darago? Thirteen. And Gable? Also a six. Awesome. Yes. 
<laughs> so We're just too charismatic for our own good. Ziri, <laughs> Vari, and Gable, you feel your feet start to move you closer, step by step by step mm. towards this glowing circle in the center of the floor. There you go. Watch as your comp- as your companion Miziri and the two recent newly acquired companions all start to sort of move towards this circle of glowing runes that lies in the center of the floor. Uh okay. And you no. Can, and you can smell you can smell the smell of like blossoming flowers and fresh fruits. Do I recognize what kind of runes these are on the ground? Oh, uh, what languages do you speak? Celestial, infernal, elvish, um, common. I think that's it. All right, what, make what me that? make me an arcana check, please. Okay. Because they look they look elvish, but not quite elvish. Okay. Oh, can I can I see uh, as well? I'm, I'm still watching. As you're walking towards them, yes, Vari, you can read these. Okay. I that's think, like, actually, I just bet you can read these. Yeah, I know Elvish and Draco. What did you roll? I only rolled a two, so that's nothing. Weird Elvish. Vari, this is Sylvan. Ooh, okay. Yeah, this I do This is very know definitely Sylvan. In terms of the, the magic, Imagine. the runes, the scent that's wafting through now you, the plant of blossom, the peaceful sense of clarity and wonder as you step towards this circle is familiar to you. And there I go, you watch as one by one by one your companions reach this circle. And Vari, you roll the lowest. So I'll say Vari is the first to, st- as your foot steps across this circle, one foot, then the other foot. There I go. You watch as Vari vanishes. Can can I like turn around right before I vanish? Like, what can go wrong? And just. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm going to try and stop Missouri. Uh I don't think I could stop Gable. He's twice my size, but. Uh, yeah, I would definitely be like reaching out. Like, I don't know what's happening. Right. Beery, my feet feel like dancing towards this circle. <laughs> I'm going. There I go. Make me, make me, make me an athletics check, Missouri. Make me an either an acrobatics or athletics check to try and escape from him. Every inch of your body is drawing you towards this circle. The call of this, the song that plays through your mind, the scent, the sound, the feeling of intense peace and calm That's a one. and a light drawing you forward. That's a one? It's a one. Not a natural one, but a one. <laughs> yeah. I have negative so one, two. so like, it was a two, was yes. Two. She's gone. Like, so it doesn't matter what her Like mom. You reach to try and pull her and hold her back, but <sighs> Missouri and Gable both to drift apart as they step into the circle. And Darago, you find yourself standing alone at the lip of this circle. Hi. In this room. The sound of goblin scuffles off in the distance. Like, yeah, what's that doing? I don't know. Your companion's having gone. What would you yes. like to do? Is there anywhere else to go from here, or is it just this gateway, as they call it, from which no one ever returns? Are you asking me or the goblins? I don't... Be feeling afraid of being alone, Darago is just going to step. In. He's going to close his eyes and step into the circle. So as you step into the circle, you feel this, the calming song building in your mind, this sense of peace and the cold of this castle disappears and you feel this, this warmth wash 
over you. And if possible, O oh voice on high, could we choose this point to take our break? I think this would be a very oh. optimum point. O oh, oh, voice on yes, high. Great, great, great voice in the sky, please. Oh, sky god. <laughs> what? Why, Jade? No. All right, we're back. So, the four of you slowly wake up come to your senses and you find yourself in in a room which seems familiar and yet unfamiliar it has a ceiling and walls but other than that the dimensions and the, the actual stonework is oddly familiar to the to the room in the frozen castle where you woke up only 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 less than an hour ago only this room rather than ice and snow the floor is strewn with leaves and petals there is decoration of vines up the wall weaving their way up the walls and like bracket fungus sprouting from the stonework you can hear birds singing off in the distance and smell green leaves and fresh scent of spring and life but slowly, slowly, you come awake. What would you like to do? Is there any windows or anything, like a hole in the wall that I could see outside? Yes. So... And it, is it that, that way, the, the left side of mine? There's, some, there's like small arrow slit-like windows, and stepping up to one of them, looking out, you can see, you can see mountains. Similar to the mountains you saw from the frozen castle. Only the what is behind these mountains is different. Rather than the clouded, stormy sky of where you were before, you see this sky of oranges and reds and pinks, this sunset sky reaching up from the horizon right up to this like the apex of the sky, this beautiful riot of colour reflecting off these mountains which are still snow covered but lit in these pinks and golds and it's beautiful mm. and worryingly familiar I'm starting, to get, I'm starting to get tired of waking up in strange places I think it's the same str- Gable and I'm just gonna kick him, I'm gonna kick him no, just the, ha- the housekeeping can come back later I look at very approvingly <laughs> uh, Gable ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 okay, I broke that rib. I broke that rib last year. Oh. Oh, right, sorry. Oh, I, no, I meant okay. to kick a little higher. Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. No, I, I know that you did, and I don't I don't fault you for it. I know that you know. Ooh, okay. <sighs> um, can I roll a deception? Because I definitely meant to kick him in that rib. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. Gable, Gable so, do you care? Are you- I are do you- not. I do not. I trust him. Yeah. Oh, is it trust? Is, oh. Like, oh. The trust is and I'm breaking that trust. He's like a puppy. No. Do you feel? No. Do you feel good about yourself? Very. How could you do this to him? Very good. <laughs> he's good. He has a good. He's a good friend. A lot of you saying things like that to him to make him feel bad. He's a good friend. Of course, of course he is. She is. So, I'm going to check the door. I'm gonna see. Uh, is it is it locked or anything? The door is not locked. Hmm. So the, the f- first Ooh. thing I do if I, if I turn the handle and and kind of slowly open it is look to my right and do I see the same like the the similar like two doors? Yes. So as you start looking through this door, you see there's one door ahead of you, and two doors on your right, same as the doors that led into cupboards previously. Back. I'm just gonna close the door again and turn around. It's like we're in the same place. Maybe not in the same time, but we're in the same place. Maybe in the past, because everything is not broken yet. So You're now we're going we... to kill the dragon. I think the dragon might still be alive. Then at least we know we can kill it. Yes! Yes! Woo! Okay, okay, so we get to actually do it this time. 
Okay. All right. So time uh, trial. According to Maybe the Goblin, I could you did please it. lower your voice? We don't know who could be listening. I'm sorry. We should probably tread carefully this time, even more carefully than before. Since so maybe we is... don't break down the doors. You see, you see me with my shoulder in the door already. I just kind of back off, like the door was open, Gable. I opened the get the door. I didn't know if no. you opened it the right way, though. It's it's fine, and I opened the the door again. See, perfect door. Now, Missouri is the quietest among us. Missouri, would you mind it's scouting a little bit ahead? Certainly, I'll just go see what there is to see. You're wasting your time, big guy. I've been trying that for months and haven't gotten anywhere. She's I... scary, isn't she? Super mm. scary. I kind of like it. Missouri, where are you heading? I just want to do it quietly. Yes. In which case, make me a stealth check, please. Uh, actually, before she makes the stealth check, I would like to... I'll put my hand on her shoulder and use um, Blessing of the Trickster. For the next hour, she has advantage on stealth checks. Hey, uh, okay. so I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my Bardic Inspiration because he's a bard. I can tell, hey, hey, I'm proud of you. You get in there, you fight like a champion. You fight like a winner. You fight like the whole world is, uh, is relying on you to carry the belt and make it, make it, make it your own. Make it happen. Envision it, see the future, do it. And now you're inspired with 1d6. She looks incredibly confused, but also it's it's like, cool. Okay, I get this. Right. As she sneaks out, I feel like the three of us are just doing like the totem pole thing around the side of the door. <laughs> around the door. I'm, I'm like the middle one, like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> and I think if you're the middle one, then I, then I think I must necessarily be the bottom one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is uh, 25. Okay, so between various encouragements and trickstery blessings, you feel confident in your stealth of slipping through out of the door of the room in which you've awoken and out further into this familiar and yet unfamiliar castle. And so ahead of you, there's a door that led through to where in the alternate castle you'd met the goblin. And to your right, there's the two doors that lead to in the alternate castle, cupboards. Where would you like to go, Missouri? Since I'm pretty sure those are cupboards and closets on the one side, I'm going to head the direction toward where we jumped before. Okay, so you head for, you as you head forwards softly and quietly and silently, Make me a perception check, please. Just see what you can see. 21. All right. So first door, it's not locked. You can pass, pass through it with ease. Come through to a second door. Click. Not locked either. And as you pass through this door, you can hear a voice off to your right through the neck through the set of double doors. You can hear a voice sort of humming tunelessly and happily behind that door. It sounds like someone moving around. Okay, I'm gonna just turn and kind of go back toward the group and report back, not disturbing the door. So do you think like she's like into I, like bigger dudes or do you, is it like, is it cause she's, is it, I could have a shot cause I'm tall, you think? No, I, mean, I don't think so. Oh, oh, you are sneakiest, you are so sneaky. Oh my God. Ooh. Ooh. Hi. That's why we don't talk about people behind their backs, good <laughs> or bad. <laughs> so the coast is clear through back where we jumped earlier. It's all together now. I guess we are. 
a hundred years past, I hear a voice through the door. There's someone just kind of singing to themselves. Or who was it? What did they look like? I didn't look through the door. I just listened. Well, okay. I guess we're I didn't want to open there. the door on them while I was by myself. She's very considerate. True. Fine, it's fine. I, she well, might I I need to go ahead and gather information or anything. Well, you you don't like it when I kill people, and I might have had to kill them. Okay, that's and it's fair. Probably easier if we talk to them. Yeah, you and I. I'm not much of a talker. Sure. All right. Let's she see if we can. The way. And then I'm going to walk out the door. I just hope it's not another goblin. <laughs> Most right. likely will be. We're all so very yeah. nice. So you're heading back up through those through those two doors that Missouri had passed through before. Um, reaching up towards this fungus-filled atrium and this set of double doors that's in the alternate castle led out into a courtyard. And you could definitely hear someone moving around on, now on the other side of these doors. Grindy, you can move your token. I, I did. So. They all succeeded. I'm oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. So who wants to go and open these doors? No, not you, Gable. We don't want to scare another goblin. I didn't scare her. She was a big fan. Uh, big fan with that crossbow. Barry, I think you should go first. Sure. I'm going to go and check the door. All right. So, as in, it's, it's not locked. It's a set of double doors. Mm-hmm. They're up on this side. Them. They're push doors. Mm-hmm. Push, push doors. And they swing open. And you see. And what do I see? You see in the courtyard before, before you, you see. A it's young, not a goblin. And not a goblin. No, no, not a goblin at all. You see a young, a young blonde haired girl sort of with a basket in her hands who is picking peaches from the tree ahead of you. And it, Seeing you emerge from this door, she goes, oh! Oh! And, was, and these peach, peaches fill out across the ground around her. She said, I'm going to start helping her pick up some of the peaches. I'm Sorry about ba- your peaches. Back? back? What do you mean back? You came back And then dessert. I'm just going to... Dessert. Oh, right. I'm so worried when you left. Okay, so we don't remember anything. Oh, Mary, come on! How how long ago did we leave? Yeah. Oh, um, it's it's hard to keep track sometimes. I mean, maybe a few hours ago, but time is relative, you know. Is there a dragon? I, so I'm coming to learn. A, a dragon? Oh. No, there's there's no dragon anymore. You killed the dragon. Yes! Booyah! You don't have to say booyah, the Goblin King isn't here anymore. It's just really catchy. <laughs> Who killed the dragon exactly? <laughs> I don't I don't know. No, we hadn't got to that part of the anecdote yet. We were telling this you were telling us this wonderful story over dinner, and then and then you left and not Sorry. you missed dessert. Please, please. Come, M- mother, mother, and grandmother will be expecting you. Like, I'm sorry. So we don't remember anything at all. What was your name again? Oh, I'm Gerda. Gerda. Great, great. So, what did we do you that we missed? Me, Barry. Um, I'm yeah, so sorry. It's not real nice of you, man. How it's, could you forget yes. Gerda? It's your it's, fault. It's completely my fault, and I'm sorry. I just wanted to oh. know, though. He owns up. That's what were we doing? What were we doing between food disappearing and dessert? What happened there? I mean, you had a little bit of a fallout with Mama, but then you left. Left as in, like, walked fallout. away or. A fallout over what? You, uh, exactly. Like, Slammed down your cutlery and leapt up from the table and ran ran off through the castle. That sounds that sounds just like you. Very impetuous. I, I, I don't I don't know why. Like 
We were just we were just offering you dinner. Let's um, see. Is dinner right. still an oh, option? Yeah, yeah, dessert is still an option. Come, come on, this way. Hope it has peaches. There's definitely sure. peaches. Um, I'm I'm I I was helping her with the peaches and stuff. Can I actually like inspect one of those peaches? Um, if it's just like a regular peach completely, or just like why? Make a make a perception check on peaches. Yeah, I just wanted to. Or nature, if you want to know, you utilize your general peach knowledge. I guess. I'm I'm just gonna perception it. I it's a peach. Uh, it's an eight. It's probably just a peach. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. That's no, fine. Yeah. Beer. Why are you staring at the Why are you staring at the peach? It might be a nectarine. Beer. It's a peach. It might be a nectarine. Aren't you like? Okay. Let's go. I think we need to go. Fruit. Grandma made dessert. We're gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. G- Gerda th- th- again. Right. Sorry if I've sorry if I scared you or he scared you on the way in. Thank you very much for inviting us back. Sorry, he could be very impetuous, and it's, and like and yeah. It's okay. I, I I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Ah, uh, sorry. We did, we Thank needn't you. either. No, come on, come on this way. Dessert's waiting. Yeah, Fear, I see where you're and coming from. And she starts from. heading towards the set double that. doors. Yes, just He'll follow. a little bit. I'm just going to continue on, and then I'm just going to try to be a little bit more looking around everything as I can. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this courtyard, it has the same trees as the courtyard in the frozen castle, except here, these trees are lush with green leaves and carrying like a heavy burden of peaches across over them. But... Other than that, they seem they follow the same layout as the frozen castle. But the ground, the ground is scattered with flowers blooming up through the cracks in the stones, fungus sprouting from the walls. Everything is alive with life. And it's really hot here. See, and it's really slightly too warm. Like. Mm. What, you don't like seasons? I think it's it's great season to let your hair down and everything. Barry, didn't you say that white dragons like the cold? Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's weird. All Gabe likes the cold, too. Weird. Yeah. It, have they served us dessert or anything yet? Any kind of food that they've offered us? Come, this way, this way. There we go. Find Good down. That way, and man. Gerda pushes open another set of the doors into a dining room. The table laid out with food. Oh, wonderful. I'm going to, uh, Dargo rather, is going to reach into his jacket, uh, grab his, uh, the black mask, which is his holy symbol, and uh, whisper a quiet prayer to mask. Um, he's going to cast detect magic. Okay. All right, so as as the doors swing open into this room and all four of you see you see alongside Gerda there is now there is a woman in this with long brown hair in this golden gown sort of trimmed with leaves whoa like Gerda is sort of young this 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 woman she's not young as such but very st- stunningly beautiful like like hard to take your eyes off her beautiful and somewhere over the other end of the table there's some old woman but there's this this beautiful beautiful woman mm. and Darago magic across Gerda across both of these two women in this room is a strong strong sense of magic specifically is the food magical illusion magic the food doesn't seem any more magical in the background magic of this entire place. That looks delicious. And Every, I, there's a I sort of subtle through. air of, in, it's almost Do like a mixture of enchantment, illusion, and a few of the schools like mingled in, but everything about this place is subtly and intensely magical. 
You're gonna thank you, ma'am, grandma, mama. It's very nice of you to what are we, what are we eating tonight? And I just like pull back a chair as they're standing in the doorway, like guys, come on. I'm I'm just gonna I, I don't think I'm that just would gonna be kind of like you know. Why? I, I would rather not eat anything until perhaps um until what? Uh, until I hear more about yourselves. I I would oh, feel really no, a conversation. That I know. That's questions me. over the starters, questions over the mains, now questions at dessert too. Oh, I'm always interested in maids. Um, well, what do you want to know? <laughs> Is it? Why are you so welcoming to such a ragtag group of strangers? Coming we love home. to have guests for dinner. We love to have guests for dinner. I, I, I'm poking the food around the plate with my fork, but not eating it. Gable, make me a perception I, check. Yes, ma'am. 13, but he ain't a very wise boy, as far as I understand. That is. It looks nice. It is. So, yeah. It looks 13. really nice. Like, Sorry. So. Is it perception? It's a 16 total. It looks nice. And then as you put it through, like, you, you look down at your food, you're sort of like poking it around your plate. Your food looks back up at you. There is very definitely an eyeball staring up at you from this cake. Wonderful. They like to have yeah. their guests I, for dinner. I, 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 now, as, as, please they're all, take a they're seat, all, everyone. I don't think I, that I will. I think I know what the falling out is for. Falling out with most, my mama. Most tedious. I turn, I turn around to Viri like, Well, no. you know, they say you can't con a con, man. What do you mean? I like those turns of words that you were using, but I understand now we left before dessert because, well, we might be dessert. <laughs> no, no, you're definitely more of an appetizer. Uh, I've been called a wonderful. snack. G G Gable, I please. Do. Gable. Can you I'll could you just uh, do me a favor and 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 yeah, smash? Stand up. Smash! Smash! Right now! Right now! Smash! I them. take. I, I throw. I throw the, <laughs> the table. I, I, um, I, I, I'm just gonna. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna go over to to Gable and I'll be like, "Oh yeah, smash!" Yeah, and I just like I, oh, I yeah. double double double. <laughs> The, the the table um and if i could i could if i could turn that thing over in one Bring move me uh, a strength check for table yeah. flipping and then everyone i'm going to ask you in a moment to roll in a very important word beginning with i <laughs> in interesting <laughs> introspection mm. How introspection what did we do wrong I've got it. roll for <laughs> insight all right uh, just a regular strength check um yeah. that um, is uh, a 16 plus nine, uh, 16 plus six, 22. Okay. Ooh, yeah. This crashing of crockery and plates going everywhere. Ah! You successfully flip the table and everyone, I'd like you to roll initiative, please. That's the I word I was trying to think of. 22. Well then. Uh, do you want us to, do you want us to click token and do it in, uh, in roll 20? Uh, you can, if you like. I have also got such high tech procedures. Okay. Then you, uh, uh, 14. Yes. 14 for Gable. That's, four, that's 14 for Vary. Oh my gosh. Pick between yourselves who would like to go first. Oh, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ready? Um, Ready? Yeah. Ready? Sure. Ready? Rock. Rock. Paper. <laughs> scissors. <laughs> well, okay. Well, okay. I, I, obviously, obviously, I go first. Woohoo! Let's go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. Okay, so Zoom, rock, paper, scissors, not a good game to play. Just let you know. <laughs> the, lag, the lag is not your friend on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. that, dude's, that dude's on the other side of the world right now. So, I mean. Uh... <laughs> the fact that you're playing rock, paper, scissors with someone on the other side of the world is pretty cool, actually. It's, it's amazing. Cool. All right. right. Uh, Amy, oh, Missouri, what do you 18. got? 18. Oh, wow. Am I going first? Wow. Jumping, jumping into combat like you jumped on top of, you know, insulting Hang Gable. Uh, <laughs> Barry and Gable, did you decide who was going first? Which one of you is first? Gable is going first. Okay, great. Of course you are, because there's only space below. Great. Yeah. 
Okay. There I go. The table has been flipped. Tensions have reached a, a surprising head in this room. What would you like to do? Um, you should probably move closer to the to the room too. Yeah. Uh, yes, I should. Sorry. I would like to. Uh, actually, I, I would like to get get myself away from uh, some of this and uh, give. Ooh, could I give Gable the help action? Yeah, you trying to help him on his next attack? Yes, help him on his next attack. Uh, uh, give him a little bonus you... action help. Yep. All Maybe right. smash that one first, Gable. Yeah, smash that one. Give me some. Which one are you advising you smash first? Hmm. Um. Oh, let's go with this one first. Yeah. All right, Earth. Um, Gerda. 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 With her peaches. Okay. Um, would you like to say anything else? You have your action, you have your movement. What would you like to do? Right. Or the rest um, of your movement, I think you've used some of it. Uh, my, yes, I did use some of my movement yeah, too. You've got the rest uh, of it and you have your action or your bonus action, whichever way you'd like to do your help. Right. I am going to, let's see, can I actually get any of them from there? Can I actually get Gerda, Gerda from that angle? Well, it depends what you're trying to do. With a guiding bolt. Mm -mm -mm. A million windows open. Where is Gerda hiding? Uh, yeah, I'd say you can get Gerda with a guiding bolt. You can, well, you can try and get Gerda with a guiding bolt. I will try. All right. So that's going to be. Oh, that is a 24. A 24 will definitely hit Gerda. Like, she's a little girl. Like, like, how could you? Uh, yeah. But, but low key, I'm going to attack her too. So yeah, that's, that's just mean. <laughs> yeah. So what's the damage on your guiding bolt for bolting a little girl in the face? You monster! That's three, three, uh, that is ten radiant damage. Ten radiant damage. Poor little Gerda. And the next attack roll made. Oh, next attack roll made against her before the end of my next turn has advantage. Okay. So yeah. maybe he can smash someone else if I'm giving them the help action. Yeah. So yeah, whoever hits good next has advantage, and Gable, you had your next attack at advantage. It's it's a yeah advantage so all round. All just think. wailing on Gerda first. So, new new plan, Gable. We'll smash that other one instead. Somebody else get that one. Even better. <laughs> yeah, poor poor Gerda. Like she's not not deserve this um or maybe she did Missouri, what would you like to do it's your turn next you've seen so the table gets flipped a guiding bolt strikes girder in the face and now it's your turn all right um are these just petals on the ground yes the they're, just, they're petals on the ground okay um i'm just gonna step kind of through the door and behind uh Gable a little bit, and I'm gonna pull a dagger from my boot and just fling it at Gerda. All right, make an attack roll for swinging daggers at defenseless little girls. As I try, I'm, I'm actually kind of scared now. It's still very peaceful sounding. Yeah, well, that's because that's I'm trying to find my epic battle music. That's what I'm currently working on. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not uh, it. I realize I still have very peaceful music on, and it's like. Let's, let's, that's advantage because of guiding bolt, right? Yes. Yes. Caught. Eighteen. Okay, eighteen will hit. Actually, it was higher than that, but that's fine. I'm learning this character. Okay. Let's just do four plus four. Three plus four, seven damage. Seven points of damage. Okay. Is that everything? Do you have any bonus actions or things you'd like to do? Yeah, let me see. Let me see. 30 feet of use. I'm just going to kind of hug the wall and sneak around to the, and kind of get around to this corner. All and right. That'll do it. 
brings us to the turn of Gerda, actually. <laughs> so Gerda, having been struck by flying daggers and bolts, looks around and sees ahead of her this threatening, hulking form. And she raises her hand. And she points towards Gable. Ooh. Hello, Free Gerda, you're going to be Mira, darling. in all the pain. Become little ferret. Mm. And Gable, make me a wisdom saving throw, please. You can tell that my boy, he is super good at those. A hey, 16 flat, so no, no modifiers, just 16 flat. Oh no, that's enough. Gable, you're not turned into a ferret. Huh. Oh good, oh good. <laughs> Get out of my brain! You gotta count your lucky days in life, you're not a ferret currently. Uh, and also it's your turn, you're not a ferret. Uh, it's good, it just takes like a couple of steps. Uh. Hopefully, uh, yeah. I rolled twenties playing up, so now she stepped forward. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that way. I, I, I kind of uh, at, at that. Nope. Uh, nope. Okay, this is gonna get fun. My roll twenty does no look. Nope. <laughs> okay, she's stepping forward because my roll twenty is playing up. <laughs> okay, well, well she, she's getting. She's in my yeah. little five square there. She would be over that. I'm trying to. Oh, she's still over in the corner. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so um, see, seeing her back down, I go, smart move, sister. And I I, I, I turn, I look, I look at mom over there, I go, mother knows best, she know to run. And I go hulking to her in two steps. I, I, I bound over to the, uh, I bound over to the mother, pretty, pretty lady. And I, uh, I, I just uh, go and dive at her. Um, all I'd like to do is kind of go, um, uh, kind of bypass her a little bit. I want to get my the inside of my elbow up and around her her neck and grab her uh, the the tricep of her left arm. And I want to just in a turn. I want to see if I can just kind of pitch her back. Uh, and with a, I want to grapple her. Why are you trying to I... grapple her? Make yeah. me an athletics check, please, and I will. An advantage. An advantage. A twenty-one. Ooh, let's see if poor Morwenna. I mean, Mama. Can do any better than that. <laughs> no, she cannot. She Attitude. is now she is now grappled. You've got a, a headlock. Right. So um I can uh that reduces her to zero. Um yeah. and uh all I want to do is as I do that and kind of like like uh, follow through. Um I just want to uh like kind of like pull back her arm and look at the uh, I want to look at Vizier and go stab her right in the thing in the, this part. Dare touch me. Very, very. It is my turn. Um, it's your turn. Is the grandmother and Gerda right next to each other? Like five feet around? Yes, 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 they okay, are. Okay, good. So I am going to first use uh, cast second level uh, blur as like my body is like slowly starts to uh, shimmer a little bit, shifting and wavering, uh, making all attacks and against me at disadvantage. Unless they are, of course, they have blindsight or something like that, but hopefully they don't have blindsight. And then I'm going to sit and spend a sor sorcery point to do a quicken spell of a cantrip. Okay. As Vary raises a hand and a little small water bubble comes kind of forms and slowly from the inside turns green as he flicks this little bubble of acid right in the middle of both Gerda and her grandmother. That sounds really bad. I'm sorry. That's just, that sounds a, so evil. I've got a whole part of this, so don't worry about it. Like, I'm gonna, yeah. So they have to make their dexterity saving throw, beating okay. 16. Hmm. Oof. Ouch! What's the damage on that? Because they were both so definitely little... failed that roll. So this is my my poison right here, the acid splash. Let's go. <laughs> uh, that is actually terrible. It's three points of damage. Uh, it's okay though. Yeah, <laughs> three points of damage from from both of those. Three. Each. Yeah. Okay. Acid damage each. Hmm. All right. 
so splashed against this acid, which brings us to more Wenna's turn. I mean, Mama. Grappled as she is by Gable. <sighs> this. <sighs> this isn't like. Get your hands off me, mortal uh. fool. And you hear this buzzing starting to rise around you. It's slow, starts to faint and gets more and more intense as up in the area around around encompassing you and Missouri and oh and and all of you in fact oh no air slowly and steadily becomes filled with bees Bees? Oh. But what? Bees? Bees. Yes. Bees? Yeah. bees. Oh, boy. The air is full of bees. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this buzzing cloud. Why not just kind of come on a fire or something like that? Swarming s- s- cloud of, of bees. And I'd like you all to make a constitution saving throw, please. I, I, I feel like Nicolas Cage in The Wicker Man. Not the bees. <laughs> Not the bees. Oh, she, I mean, she's also in this. I mean, please, like. That's I'd 15 rather... flat. Gable, 23. Okay. 17. Non natural 20. Wow, you Don't... guys are. Look, it's on your side tonight. Good. Wow. Okay, how much damage do I take? <laughs> well, you're taking half damage. Yep. No. Let's do some quick maths here. Right, that sounded like a lot of dice. Oh, that's not actually that many. That's only, I mean, you only each take eight points of poison damage. Oh, God. As you're stung by a large swarm of bees. Ow. 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 Oh, my eyes are open. You're in my mouth. Oh. My mouth. You're in my mouth. It's just bees. 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 Everywhere is bees. <laughs> But also, the bees seem to be also going for Moenna as well. <laughs> like, as I'm like, I'm like, I could be your friend, stab her instead. Just like taking it in the face. <laughs> They're literally just stinging me in my face and neck because my whole body is covered in leather armor. <laughs> so it's like horrible. Just, just like bees trying to like bite, sting their way through this leather armor and just not not getting much much. It's like the bees are actually flying and missing the dragon scale flying underneath to stab Barry. Mm-hmm. It's like, what? How? How did you know? Why? And as this cloud of bees comes around, uh, actually, Grandmother is going to stay over there because you know what? I'm not a fan of clouds of bees. Yeah. But she's going to point, point into the cloud of bees. Right into this difficult terrain, Cloud of Bees. And she is going to point... They're ground bees, look out! Gra- the ground bees, look, the air bees. Like, <gasps> Those are even worse! I know, like, the water bees, the water bees are the worst. Oh, uh, water bees I would not be able to deal with. Sorry, I'm doing my math. And- oh, water bees! Okay, and she points towards the nearest target, which is still Gable. You're still you're still target number one. You're standing right in their in their vision, and this bolt of icy this well not bolt quite this ray of frosty icy cold energy emerges from her hands towards you, and. Gable, will a 17 hit you? I believe that it does. Uh, let me just double check. It does. Okay. Gable, you take where the hell are my dice? You take where the hell are my dice damage? It's a very dangerous form of dice. 
damage. That is, that, that actually is. You take seven points of cold damage. God dang, yeah, okay. As this frosty ray strikes you, and there I go. It's your turn. Oh. There's bees everywhere. What would you like to do? All right. Is there any way I could even enter the room without getting caught in the bees? I mean, you're currently in the bees, going into the room. More bees. More bees. Oh! Oh, God. All right. All right, let's bees see. Bees are centered um, on Morwenna and swarming around her. Like, did, By the way, did anyone even attack uh, Gerda while she was glowing from my guiding bolt? Yeah. I did. We got a okay, flying cool. knife. All right, her. excellent. Yes. All right. Um, all right. Uh, and so Gerda and then uh, Mama over here have been hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Mama, I think, is just ho is, is grappled. Oh, she's just grappled? Yeah. <sighs> she's been hurt a little, right. but she's grappled, mostly. As far as you know. I am going... I am going to step into the bees, unfortunately, because that's the only way I can get anything done, apparently. Um, I am going to uh, take a look at Gerda. Darga will hold up his hand and go, uh, I think it's time for you to just go to sleep. He snaps his fingers, but instead of the sound of fingers snapping, you hear the sonorous toll of a bell. He tolls the dead. Um, She's gonna to have to make a constitution save. Okay. Oof. I think I'm retiring that one. That was an eight total. Yeah, no. She will take uh, 2d12 uh, necrotic damage. Oof. Roll that damage. We are yep. trying to kill the girl as soon as possible is what it is, holy. That is 15 necrotic damage overall. Okay. Gerd is, Gerd is not looking as great as Gerd did before. Like, her sweet and perfect skin is, like, starting to wither with this, like, like, decay of necrotic damage. And her beautiful golden hair starts to, like, frazzle a little. And you can see there's grey in it now. And perhaps a sense that something lying beneath the vision of Gerda that you have seen. Right. So Misery, could you please take care of Bee Lady? Uh, I'm sure she will already have advantage. <laughs> but, but I'll just give her the help action anyway. All right. Okay. And that's my turn. Which brings us over to Misery. What is it? So I'm gonna just pull the hood of my cloak up to try to get some cover from these damn bees. And I'm gonna approach uh, Mama there. Is that Mama? Mm -hmm. Yes, that okay. is that it. That is and Mama. I'm gonna just take my sword and just try to get her right up here, like in uh -huh. her ribs, just straight up. All right. Roll us, roll a stabbing attack. Stabbiness. Stab, stab. Roll for stab. Let's go. Roll for stab. With advantage. Roll, roll for stab. Ooh, that's a 19 on the dice. Oh. So, 26. Ooh, that will definitely hit. And currently, for starters, you have advantage. And secondly, she is engaged in combat with Gable. Did you know what that means? Attack. Bring out your D6s. Make it, <laughs> Make it rain oh. of D6s, girl. Come on. I actually have Make to reroll some because I don't have enough. <gasps> Ooh, that was really good. That was two fives and a six. And I'll roll one more. And another five. So 15 plus six, 21 plus my four. So a total of 25 damage. So, do you want to hear the good news? As your sword slams into her, <laughs> the oh, bees God. disappear. Okay. 
Okay. There are no longer a swarm of bees around you. I'm afraid there's bad news, though. <laughs> the bad news is she's not dead yet, but there are no more bees. Hey, so, I'll take it. You know, swings and roundabouts. But as this, as this cloud of bees disappears, that's... Is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn, Mizari, as it comes around to Gerda's turn? Uh, no, I'm gonna stay right here. Alright, so as this cloud of bees disappears, Gerda looks on into the room and she looks towards Darago. Uh-oh. And she, and she points upwards and you watch as this, from the sky, this beam of light shines down upon you. This bright, clear moonlight illuminating you. Oh. And, and there's this five foot radius around you. And I'd like you to make me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh boy. I don't oh, like that boy's got burn. Yes. Oh no, the moon beam. I'm just not very constitution-y. That's a, that's, that's a six. Do you, is that enough, DM? DM, is that enough to not be affected by the thing? Is it six thank, thank enough? You, thank you. That's good, Drew. That's, no, yeah, no yeah, that's I, good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you for trying, but no, no. A six is not enough. A six is not enough. Right, buddy. Oh. So we're going to again. Maybe I could have... There I go. You take eight points of radiant damage as this brilliant light sears down upon you. Searing and squirting. This is bright, clear. Right in front light. of me, too. I want Gable sunglasses right now. Yes. There we go. And that brings us round to uh, Gable's turn because Gerda is going to stay where she is because she's fine over there. Beautiful. All right. So, um, so seeing that seeing that she's getting stabby stabbed, uh, I, all, all I'd like to do is um, uh, I, so I kind of have her turn like this. I'm gonna pull her off the sword. Um, I want to spin 180 degrees and basically face her towards where the table's at. Uh, so um, essentially, uh, yeah, uh, push her, uh, push her down a little bit to what would be the uh, the the bottom right. A little bit You're further. assuming I have way more m- mover- m- maneuverability Mo- control of roll 20 at the moment than I actually do. All right. Basically zero. It just keeps skidding all over the place. It's like someone's put my roll 20 on roller skates. All right. So uh, um, uh, what I'd like to do is um, just uh, uh, you-, you hear me give like a big like, oh, yeah. And I just like I, I go and uh, I kind of want to pop her right in the middle of the chest. Uh, I'm going to cast Thunder Wave and my big oh, yeah, is, uh, is my way to do it. Uh, so she's got to make a con save. Um. Oh, she actually made a save. Oh, beautiful! All right. So anyway, uh, so oh, as I hit fine. hit her on that, um, it does. Uh, she takes half damage on a save, I believe. Yeah. That's what Thunder Wave. Yeah. Or no, mm, on a successful save, half damage, and is a push. Okay. Uh, where did my deeds go? Beautiful. All right. Uh, a two and a three, five points of damage. Uh, but um, on that, so with that, uh, as I do that, looking up, wild, uh, uh, raging eyes, veins begin to bulge in the neck. That one, that, like kind of tick, 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 the one that kind of comes up in the forehead too, and he just kind of, uh, and uh, and and a uh, bonus action rage. Uh, great. So that's now you're turn. angry. Wow. That's just my. That's my. You didn't get pushed back. You're gonna get angry about it. Well, yeah, I mean, if it was going to be like a whole thing, she would have like yeah. like knocked yeah. into the table. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to hear you and been like, hey, fucking look at me. I'm great. Yeah, no, it's a whole thing. Right. Very, very. I can not get this right. It's your turn. What would you like to do? I, I don't remember. Is is the moonbeam like start of turn? If he starts his turn, is he going to get hit again? Uh, uh, uh. It starts its turn there. Yeah. Enter, enters the spell for the first time on its turn or starts its turn there. Okay, so I am going to move by, like around around here first. Like I'm gonna first move by. As I'm moving by, I'm going to tap uh, Derigo and use my uh, face step and teleport him away. 
and like so he can be like here or something like that. So he just blinks away out of that beam as I'm moving. All right. And then I'm going to get up to the t- get up to the table or Where like around around with um here, just right here. Just okay. out outside of the circle for now so you don't get hit again. And then as right. I'm doing that too, small little glowing orb as it starts green and then I'm like no, probably this one instead and then toss it at Gerder with uh I'm going to do a chromatic orb on her with of cold. Let's right. See if I have it. What do I need to roll or what do you need to roll? I'm I'm rolling and it is a 17 to hit. That will hit. I'll okay, hit Gerda. Cool. That will hit Gerda. And I will do that and Oh, why why do I only have one? Oh, two. I'll do two of them first. Okay. Spell save is uh, eight plus proficiency plus spell casting modifier, right? Eight or is it ten? Spell casting. Just uh, out of curiosity. Eight plus I think it's eight plus proficiency plus whatever your spell, spell casting modifier is. Got it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Think spell casting thingy is. I mean your modifier includes your proficiency, so So I'm going to toss it, but then I'm gonna to toss it with one hand like this. And as I toss it, I duplicate it with a twin spell and I shoot one towards her. And that's going to be 14 points of damage as I take this other one and I'm going to toss it right at the mama. Okay, that's... Uh, and I'm right. going to roll for that one. Neither of these two not great anymore. That is a 14 to hit. Does that hit? 14 will not hit Mama Morena. Ah. No, it will not. Does he get yeah. advantage because he's grappled? I don't believe so. Do you get advantage for uh, ranged spell attacks? Or is it a save for her? Uh, no, I, it's a ranged spell attack. So you would get advantage because she's grappled. Oh, right. So yeah, I just kind of like palm her no. and I don't Tiss, what's the DM say? There's, you don't get advantage necessarily on hitting grapple people. Okay. Okay. Cool. I There's too <laughs> much of Gable, I, I miss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is just Gable is every. This is just like he is way bigger than she is. She's just like elegant, still, still was... really elegant looking lady. Even though there's just a few patches showing through of like this twisted more. And then back to back to pristine elegance again. Yeah. I was serious. So... This woman is melting. I, I tried to do something cool. Why would you? Uh, you know, that's, that's that was fine. good. That's that was good. Okay. It was really good. <laughs> Yep, yep, all right, right. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. So, Morwenna, still grappled and held by this angry thing that's holding her. So, give us this. And turns to the person who recently stabbed her. And. She looks to you. Misery. And she raises her hand and she points down, not at you, but at your sword. And in the back of your mind, you hear once again this this buzzing sound as the magic builds and you feel the sword in your hand start to grow warm, like a warm summer's heat. And then more than a warm summer's heat as the sword transitions into searing, searingly, searingly hot and i need you to make me a constitution saving throw please and also you take seven points of fire damage as your sword heats it's a searing searing heat. uh con save was a dirty 20. oh yeah i mean you can hold on to your sword it's just really really hot i'll like hot potato it for a second Seven points, you said? Yes, yeah, seven points of fire damage. Heat metal is so good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then from across the room, our friend here, Grandmama, looks over at this, 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 this level of chaos and 
uncontrolled activity. And she is going to move. Just get out of there. <laughs> Heads up. Swings through these doors. And as these doors are still... As these doors st- still open, she points down towards Darago and Vari. And she smiles. <laughs> And you see, like, she is already old, but elegantly old. You see as any semblance of beauty melts away from her. And you see this hideous, wrinkled, watered and twisted face. Yeah. <laughs> and this cone of cold, oh, thank God. Yes. bitter... Icy air engulfs both of you. Oh, and real quick. To Does make she... me both constitution saving throws, please. I'm really sorry, Daraga. I'm hoping um, I don't die. Just just a real quick question. Does she get hit by the, the, the beam of whatever that's right there as she walks through it? Oh, or no? Uh, yes, yes. I... Uh, yes, she does for half that. I yep. also got a 16. Okay. So, both of you are only taking half damage as I play the game of... Did anyone see my D8s? Okay, I'm going to have to roll these two several times. Oh, boy. Great. Yeah. Each of you takes 16 points of cold damage. As this vary, I think yours might be not. Eight. I'm out. Eight. I'm eight. What was that, Darigo? I'm, I'm out. So as this frosty, cold wind blows through the chamber, blows through these doors, and like the table was rammed in ice now, um, Vary, you watch us in front of you. Darago goes down. Oh, jeez. And Darago, it's actually your turn next. Right. Well, uh, death save, right? Yes, yes, we're into death saves. Skinny Excellent. human! Skinny human! <laughs> what? Skinny that's, human, all right. Yeah, that's all you hear from beyond the grave, okay? Wonderful, wonderful, I love it. That is a 12. That's a success. One in the success column. All right. Ziri, you see as this billow, your sword is still really hot. Really hot. And you've seen as this billow of icy cold from the other side of the room takes down Darago. Uh, what would you like to do as you take six points of fire damage? Oh, ouch. <laughs> I'll take that damage. Oh, not good. Okay. I... Mm. I look over at Darigo. I look at Mama. H- how does Mama look? Mama Moana ain't looking too good, to be honest. Like, she's, like, I mean, her face is half partly melting away as her illusion breaks up a little, but she looks pissed off. Angry, but healthy. Angry, and also really quite injured, but mostly angry. Okay. Really angry. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to look at Diarago. Pause for a second. And just take my sword and stab Mama again. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't broke, all right. Make us make a stabby stab. I know how words work. Roll for stab. Roll, Roll for, for stab. stabs. Uh, that's a dirty 20. Okay, that will definitely hit. 
And you get your early sixes. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I'm paying for the last one. That was really good. <laughs> 12 total damage. Ouch. Yeah, no, she's she's Ooch. she's got a she's got a happy bunny. <laughs> um this time I'm going to bonus action disengage and move to this back corner by these like funguses and kind of like try to tuck into the fungus a little. Okay. Making friends with fungi. Yeah. Tuck a fungus. So as you back, as you stab, you hear, Mama, take your hands off her. Take your hands, come into our home, eat our food, and then disrespect our hospitality. I, I don't remember eating any of the food. Gable tried. I don't I don't remember any of these people, but... You'll pay for this. You'll pay for this. And Gerda... Gerda is going to point... Gerda is going to point once more at... Actually, no, this time she's going to point at... Vari. Yes. As pigs, you come into our home and devour our food, and so as pigs, you shall be. I need to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Great. Oh my god. You're wise, right? Nope, but that's okay, because I actually got a 16. You're I'm wise very enough. unwise. But... You're wise enough for this circumstance. She looks at her hands and go like, this is twice, this has not worked, and it's getting embarrassing at this point. Very is actually incredibly unperceptive. He loves himself too much. <laughs> but that's okay, it worked. She backs away a little more into that corner as it comes round to Gable's turn. All right. Um, so uh, I'm going to uh, take a, an action uh, and just um, sweep out uh, her leg um, from, and I, I kind of want to just like pick it. Uh, so tuck, uh, tuck my, the right side of my ankle kind of behind her heel and just kind of just like back slap her uh, uh, with back of my hand. And, uh, and 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 that is a shove action. All right. So, is so that I have advantage on that. Um, an eighteen. Is that that shoves contested or shoves against AC? Uh, it is a I believe it's contested. Uh, let me let me check. Uh, let me double tap. But um, while I do that, uh, so uh, if, if if she go down or or not, um, I'm going to use a bonus action uh, to um, uh, yell at. Um, at Darago on the ground, and I'm going to, um, and that will give him a bardic inspiration. And I'll say, "Get your ass up, skinny human!" <laughs> uh, and all right, so uh, attack action. I can make a special melee attack. Shovel creature um, target must be no more than one size larger. Instead of making an attack roll, I make a strength of check. My target strength of body support dexterity check. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, that succeeds. <laughs> Boom. All right. So yeah, uh, uh, tuck, tuck behind the anchor. Just Slapping the back, uh, slapping her kind of like upside the head, uh, putting her on her back, um, and I uh, look over at um, Miziri and I go stab again, and I go uh, uh, running, um, uh, running towards. Uh, I believe. Let's see, where's my boy? Um, talking Dergo, right there in the middle. I, I, I go run towards and reach out a hand. Um, okay, good. Okay, so. Okay. Um, DM. How wide is this door? This door right here. How wide this is one? that? Mm -hmm. mm. Would you say it's about five feet? I'd say it's about five feet, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, very slowly stops blurring, because I can't concentrate on two things at once. But I can uh, use my last uh, sword points to cast... Uh, to make a wall of water appear across this entire f wall. Okay. Like and that, then... with a bonus action. And then I'm going to use my other hand 
shooting out a ray of frost straight through into the grandma. Regardless of whether or not that ray of frost hits, the water is going to freeze over and it's going to close up the door. It's going to freeze that part of the wall. It has 15 okay. HP and 5 AC. 15 and HP gonna block... and 5 AC. Yep. Okay, let's and, see if uh, it hits me... the grandmama. Let's see if it hits the grandmama. Um, that is an 18 to hit. An 18 will hit grandmama. She's, she, she, she didn't bring her her plate armor. Like she didn't have her plate armor, and that is going to be six. Like who first plate armor? She did it with the grandkids. Yeah, six points of cold damage <laughs> from the water mage. Okay, so as is, I, I mean, she doesn't seem quite as fussed about this as you'd expect someone to normally be, but that's completely okay. I just want that entire wall there just for now. There is now a wall of. A wall of icy wonder. It's just that square too. Everything else is still water around the around the the walls. Ah, no, no, there, no, there, no. <laughs> I mean, that is water, so yeah, that's no, fine. No, no. Look, I tried to draw it in that one bit in the middle, and I've succeeded in drawing a line everywhere but where I want that line. So, can someone please draw the line where I actually want? That line? I, what's what's going on with your wrong. Windows ninety five over there? Having a little trouble with the. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what's going there. on. It's really quite annoying. Sorry. I just made a bro. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's a door and a door. <laughs> there. Uh, but yes. So, Grandma hidden behind this icy wall, and and Morwenna Mama is on the floor, right? Yes. Yeah, she's she's flat she's flat on her back. I just I just I just Rick flared that girl right upside the head. Flat on her back? Oh yeah. She looks up here. And just this look of pure anger and unthinking sort of rage on her face. She's she slaps her hand down onto your arm and the hell on earth. Under I'm, I'm whose arm, Tess? What? Under whose arm? Yours. Sorry. Okay. Cables. Okay. So sorry. I, I thought I thought that I I, I created enough separation. That's, that's bad on oh, me. Sorry, no, she sorry. is right there. No, yeah, she no. is right there. You're right. Sorry. Oh, and she points it to. In this case, if you're out of her reach, she waves her hand towards you. Why? Why did I say a thing? And it's going to try and remember how an alphabet works. And it's going to please hold, please hold. As I readjust something. <laughs> Books are great until you actually need to find something fast. Have you considered donating to our Patreon? We're live <laughs> now. You can find it, and there are different tiers where you can affect the outcomes of our game. Okay. That's Patreon. So as she holds out her hand, this is this spray of like almost like oh well, I guess clearish like clearish green tinted liquid. Oh like stinging like um I think you need a constitution saving throw, please. Uh, nineteen on the dice plus it's my uh, I believe it's a five because I'm proficient. Uh twenty four. That boy's not happy, but ugh. You feel, you scent this sort of poisonous scent of this poison she's spread at you, but... Eh. Uh, Fine. Uh, <clears throat> Not a problem. Like, I think to be that concerned about. I um, spit on her. She's, 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 look, if she could be more pissed off than she currently was, she'd be more pissed off, but she is currently just... She's reached maximum pissed offness at you, so it's not possible. You're looking at a dude who's currently raging, so yeah. Grandma Mara's gonna do something. Do, 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 do. It, she ain't gonna rage. And brings us to Darago. All right. Uh, that's another that's death save, but you do have a bardic inspiration, inspiration if you'd like to use it. Yep, I will use that. Of course, I will. That is an 18 with the inspiration. All right. 
steadily, steadily. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. Missouri, we'll what would you like to do? All right, so Mama's still on the ground. Yeah, Mama's yeah, still not. on the ground. She did. She forgot to actually get up, which would be the sensible thing to do. She forgot, so Perfect. she's still on the ground. All right, so I'm gonna re-approach her and roll for some stabs. Roll for stabs. Roll for stab. Oh, I rolled bad for stabs. Uh, that's not gonna hit. That's only a ten. How about an advantage because she's prone? Yeah, you oh. got advantage. She's still prone. She's oh. got to stand up. <laughs> And that's a natural one, so no, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> Look, your sword's still, like, actually, I mean, hey, your sword's no longer burning hot, but it's 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 throwing you off your stride, the fact that your sword has turned against you recently, and, like, your hand is, the palm of your hand is still singed and burnt, and it's just, it's knocking you off your game. <sighs> um... All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna, I guess, just do the same thing, disengage and go back to my fungal corner over here. <laughs> You're gonna go back to the mushroom fungal corner. corner. <laughs> back to the mushroom kingdom. <laughs> I just like the idea of her just being like, oh, no, oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me, no, sorry. Just, no, Crouching just beneath the mushrooms. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to play it cool, but I am a little worried about Derigo as well, so I'm a little distracted. Oh. Oh. I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> Which brings us round to Gerda's turn, and this, this might sound like a stupid question as the end, but can you remember whose moonbeam that was? That was hers. That was yes. hers. Good. I thought it was hers, and that has some no doubt. So she will move her moonbeam over to Gable. No. Okay. The spotlight circles 15, around 20, to follow 20. you. So that is for Moonbeam. That is half damage or? It is, it is halved, right? Yes. But I just assume you know how Moonbeam works, Mr. Barge. It's actually a druid spell, but but Phelan got it for the, the limelight. Uh, I just... Wait, that is a very painful limelight. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, it, the, the, the the name of the spell was "Can you handle the limelight?" Which I thought was oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. So this 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 beautiful spotlight shines down upon you, Gable, and then sears into your flesh. Ah. Uh, yeah, but I also have it again because of rage. So yes, so you take six points. That's already half. All right. That's so halved and halved again. So that that's halved once, halved again. That would be three points of damage. You take immediately three points of damage. Okay, when I say it burns into your flesh, it stings a it bit. It hurts. It stings it's a bit. Yeah, I, look, like, I know. Yeah. I've been I've been to Myrtle Beach. It gets hot. You get the burn. All of a sudden, you, you, you've been you've been drunk on the beach for a couple of days. The, the police pick you up. It's up. Now, now is that gonna hurt me lying there like a fish? No, no, you're fine. Just all right. All right, just, just the screeriness of my my ability to make a map where the squares actually line up with any other squares. Look. This is another dimension where squares don't work the way they should. <laughs> it's a strange and mysterious world. But Gable, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, yell out, ah, first. Uh, and then, uh, well, that would be my, my free action. Um, so I'm going to uh, reach down and just grab uh, uh, grab Dargo by, um, b- uh, by the collar and just lift him up and then just palm his face, and he'll take a Cure Wounds at first level. Uh, 1d8 plus 1, I believe. Because uh, you'd get 5 points of healing. Real, real quick, ah. the, do you, you'd have to drop your Rage for it? Yeah, you have to drop your Rage. For casting spells, you can't do that in casting spells. But, 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 but. You can't okay. Rage in cast spells. It's so dumb. This is it's the worst one of Raging. You can't Rage in cast spells. Worst build I've ever considered. I don't know why anyone convinced me to do it, or or was like, "Hey, Drew, that's a great idea. Here's what you should do." Because this is your own idea. I, this has nothing to do with me. Look, you can't rage in cast spells. Right. Uh, so, so I just I just got five points of healing. Oh yeah, the moonbeam. Yeah. The moonbeam is also radiant damage. So yeah, yeah you get you. that full six points of damage. You get six points of damage because you can't. Re- no, psychic damage rage. is. No, you uh, only oh, get totem of the bear. Totem of the bear. 
Ah. But you're level. You're level two. You're you're not totemed up yet. I, we fucked that up. Yes. It's easy. No, Tis, I asked politely. I was like, hey, can we do six level? And you were like, yeah, sure, Andrew. We can do six level. And then when the push came to shove, we didn't do six level. Okay. He all right. So being six level. He is, he is lies. <laughs> this is lies. This is all lies. Yeah, got, do not yeah, right, so word minus three. Listen, listen, Michael, you're supposed to be on my side. We're supposed to be friends. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never... But I, I play for the rules. I play for the rules. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So fine. Uh, so holding holding him up like so, uh, uh, do, do, do you want me to take an action to do that? Because that was more for flavor. To hold him up? No, you can do that for, right. okay. for free. As long as fine. you're not raking and casting spells at the same time. Right. Fine. Then I go and I set, fine, I go and set him back down. And I, uh, as I do that, I go, sorry, just, just. You'll be okay, and that's his bardic inspiration for I, this. I, as, as I was held up, I just sort of go as I come back alive. Good, put me down, put me down. I'm like oh, kicking yeah. with my legs. No, oh, oh, no, it's okay. I go, uh, and I, I set him just outside the moonbeam. I'm like, uh, as I uh, set him down outside of that. Um, free action, bonus action was the bardic inspiration, which I can still do. Uh, and then I go. Um, uh, do I do I take the damage when I leave the moonbeam as well? You you, um, you start you started your turn, so you actually your turn hit it. There, so technically you, you should. Get, get um, great. All right. So um, all I do is I take then uh, I take my club. Um, what's got what's got the most damage for me? No, nope. uh, my warhammer. Just taking this thing out and like shaking it as I set him down. I never use this thing, and I just pick it up up over this girl's uh, up over Mama's head, uh, and with advantage. You got a mate. Uh, you got Mama. Uh, 18 plus six to hit, uh, 24 to hit, doing 1d8 plus three bludgeoning. Uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage. Um, what was and, that to uh, hit? Say again? What was it to hit? It was uh, 24. Lots. Yeah. Yeah. Lots. Yeah, it was lots. Lots. Uh, yeah, so uh, tw uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage. That was my bonus action to inspire. That was, we're done. Okay. Right. Seven, seven bludgeoning. Wait, As wasn't, I just that, wait, wasn't, your action, the, wasn't your action to heal him? No, I did not because I could oh, not because I'm- Okay, yeah. Okay, so in a weird alternate universe, wrong. in an alternate universe, Darago, you were okay, you were fine, you were alive again, but uh. no. No, in this universe, in this universe, your friends don't love you. In this universe, they'd rather be angry than help you. But you are inspired. But you're inspired. What's but still, you're still dying. But you're inspired and dying. It's, it's an important. It's a very inspired death. That's <laughs> wonderful. Mm. I love it. This but Vari, great... Vari, you're not dead um, or inspired. What I'm, would you like to do? I'm not dead nor inspired, but I would like to uh, chromatic orb. I will do the same thing, and I'm going to shoot Gerder, and I'm ho hoping to shoot her dead, and I'm going to cast it at second level. Shoot her dead, Michael. Shoot her dead. Let's see how it works. Uh, that is a non-natural 20. That will hit. 20. That will definitely hit. Dirty 20. Yes. Yes. 21 points of damage on that. On Gerda. She ain't looking too good anymore. And she does not look much like Gerda anymore. She is... The sweet little girl is long gone by this point. And this hunched and haggard form remains. Well, um, yeah, no, definitely. Definitely remember you like that more. Hmm. Great. Uh, I am probably friends, right. <sighs> yeah, it's the beer goggles. I told you not to drink the alcohol. Um, <laughs> but at the very beginning, it's a callback. That's funny. Yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm not gonna move. Okay. Which brings us to let's. How is Morwenna gonna try and get herself out of this annoying situation where she keeps just being? clubbed to death by this angry, angry guy. Just like, stabbing just not... and just getting clubbed. <laughs> just getting whack-a-mole and stabbed to death over here. But, but, I mean, you had pulled out your weapon, right? So she yeah. looks up and she looks to your Warhammer, was it? It may have been. 
and you hear this slow buzzing in the air and the small comfortable warmth of your warhammer handle it's not it's not made of wood by any chance <laughs> Historically speaking, a, a, an iron war. handle on a warhammer is very, very hard to handle. I'm just saying, but but it's completely. You're saying I can't handle it? Yeah, it's made of iron. Fucking give me the damage. A lot of nerve. <laughs> oh, fight! You want the damage? That's six points of damage for you. Fire damage, so you can't harm it. Do I, do I get a con save uh, to hold it? Yes, yes, you do. Okay. Um, the uh, it's nine. So. A nine. Unless I get advantage on those, which I don't You them. drop it on Mama's face. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh my gosh. Gable can I mean, handle it, but Mama can't handle it. I, yeah, I mean, drop that object if you can. I would like to. Oh, wow. <laughs> she yeah, so, so instantly regrets her decision. <laughs> I hold it there for a minute. I look at her, and I like, like, I'm holding it, and my hands are searing. It takes a minute because I'm raging. I'm like. Uh, oh, it's like in in the Home Alone where he kind of like grabs the the the, the hot uh, the hot iron. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah! I drop the thing. Uh, yeah, so I guess I would, could you treat it like an unarmed strike? One d four plus one. I mean, it kind of like like definitely does a little damage to her, and she instantly regrets her poor planning on making the guy above you holding a warhammer drop a warhammer on your head. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Road Runner. <laughs> but Anvil, Darago. All right. I was dying. It's you know it's it's been better, been worse. It's fine. Uh, I've got the uh, Bardic Inspiration, right? All right. That yeah. is a twenty-two, all told, with the Inspiration. Okay, so that's your third Which success, is my right? Third success, I believe. Yeah. So that means you're stable, right? Yeah. I'm stable. Let's now go. he's just taking a nap in the middle of combat. Before it was a serious thing, like he's dying. Now he's just sleeping, which is lazy. <laughs> he's reached catharsis. You guys have, I he's think you guys have. never been much this, for the fighting. <laughs> You'll be fine. But Miss. Mizari. Misery? Misery. <laughs> in, over in your fungus corner. What would you like to do? <laughs> fungus corner. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to rinse and repeat. Come out of the fungus corner and stabby stab mama. All right, stabby stab. All right, that is poor. And she's lying on the ground, remember, still. Yeah. Oh, yeah, still right. not got around to standing up because I keep forgetting to have her stand up. Okay, so that, she's still uh, on the ground. 17 to hit. That will hit. All right. And that's that's still going to be a sneak attack, right? Oh, so yes. All right. Better. 19 damage. So. Missouri. Yeah. As you come running out of your fungus corner, sword in hand, and you get and straight down on this still Can running. I like, can I like yeah. jump off of like, the, you know. like these like big mushroom like fungus yeah. in the corner? Yeah. And I like. Do it. Just like jump off of the fungus and like this acrobatic thing and just come straight down, like leaping off the fungus and straight down into her like that. Of course I you can. The sound effect of <laughs> bloom, bloom. This is sort she... of like Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so Mario draw. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, so brace Mario. <laughs> Mario, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not from where you are. I say Mario like every good red-blooded American should. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Who's Mario? Look, let's not get into pronunciation <laughs> discussions. We'll be here all the night. Knock, the knockoff British chimney sweep version of Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Mario. Okay, look. You mean you mean it's not a chim- This is a discussion Regardless. for another day. Regardless. Right. Another day. Right, right, right. Mama is dead. <laughs> Mama is dead. Not that mama. Like she she has a name. <laughs> but that brings us round 
to a very upset and a very, very upset Gerda, who swings around her her moonbeam onto Missouri if she can actually. Okay, I can't get the token on Missouri. It's on Missouri. It looks okay. like it. Yeah, yeah it's, on, make, it's on Missouri. If you could make your Constitution saving throw, please. Uh oh. Uh, 19 on the dice so Ooh. 21 damn good girl <sighs> that is good so you're only taking you're only taking half still could be bad guys which is half of a that's only four points of damage okay oh. all right uh, I'm barely here, but I'm here. Mama! You're barely here. How dare you kill one of us! This land will destroy you. I... You will be... never go home again. Hmm. Gable, it's your turn. My home are the crowds that love me. Thank you. I go and I just will fucking go and bulldoze this bitch. All right. Wall too. Oh no. Yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, that that bitch dead. Uh. So I go and I'd like to just grab. Uh. uh go and grapple her. That's Mari. <laughs> That's me, oh, bro. But she's so pretty though. Where is she coming from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm prettier than her. Come on now. Look at She's this. Over there. <laughs> She's not pretty I'm anymore. Pretty. Come on now. Wow. Wow. I'm, you turn I'm rage. into your I'm raging. rage. I'm raging. They all kind of look the same, you know? Like, ugh. um, Collateral damage. All right. So, yeah. Uh, just uh, bone out. Um, And uh, I would like to um, like to suplex this bitch. Um, and. Uh, all right. Sorry, dogs. All right, so yeah, uh, uh, she's. Uh, I get advantage on that. So uh, a fourteen plus nine, five. What, what was that? A twenty-five, please. Uh, twenty-five uh, is slightly higher than a five. So yes. It, it, it's just like a couple, a few. Uh, yeah. So um, with that, uh, so as she's grappled, um, that, that that is. I do not like that. I do not have bonus actions. Uh, I pass a bonus action over to. Uh, bonus action, part of inspiration to um, Viri, and I say, "Sorry, I thought you were the Any ugly girl." I, should, I think that should be it. Three, right? That should be out. All okay. right. So she is. She's grappled. She is grappled. Yeah. yeah, and I just go and 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 it's just like because I shove her face against the wall, just like with one hand, like this, as I'm like, I'm like Viri, sorry, sorry that I thought she was you. You're much prettier. And I your just, people it, are dead. No, your face is in the wall. I'm, I'm oh, out of. I'm out of. Love life. is dead. I'm. I'm going to uh, raise my hand and and just kind of like flip my hair. It's like, of course, I'm, I'm prettier. What? That's. That's. That is a nat twenty. <laughs> a nat, on being prettier. As I, of, of, on being prettier, as I sh- shoot out another chromatic orb. This time at first level. Yeah, I just step. I just step aside a little bit and just kind of give him a, an angle at it. Yeah, no, oh, she's biting. She's biting. Oh, oh. It's still rolling. 30, Thirty points of damage. Sorry, I only have one d eight. Thirty points of damage. And in the words of another DM, which I missed earlier, how would you like to do this? Hmm. Oh, this chromatic orb. I was. I was kind of like thinking about which one I would should do. So then it was it turned went from blue and slowly turned into green as I was going to shoot it acid style right into her face. That the orb just it's like a four inch in diameter and it's like yes, don't ever ever compare me to something like that ever again as it shoots her right in the face and melts her face off. Acid. <laughs> Just not not just her face, it's her whole form just melting down 
into the ground and Gable, you're just, just bet- over your hands and between your hands, just <laughs> as a f- form undoes itself around you. And... And then I just look at Gable and I was like, thank you for not mistaking me ever again, right? We should probably get the grandmother. And then I'm just gonna point at the ice and the same time, look, it's like, see Darago is like, and probably get him up too. Yes. And that's the- For this moment, you are no longer in initiative. Oh, uh oh. Where did Grandma go? She's behind the. She's behind the door. No. Oh, you're just waking up. You're doing this. Got okay. it. I'm. I'm bringing down the the wall of water of. Uh, oh, am I waking up? Okay. There's still an ice pillar that's that's blocking the door though. All right. So uh, I I I walk over and just kind of like. <gasps> I just kind of like uh, un un Hulk, and I and I, I look at Viri, and I go, "You melted a person again." And I go down, and I just grab, I, I grab Dergo, and I, I now you could take your uh, now you could take your five points of healing. All right, Dargo gets up, and it hasn't actually been that long since he got knocked out by a cone of cold, so he's kind of shivering. He's like, <sighs> "Oh, buddy, mm. I'm not feeling great." Mm. Where's that? I cast I cast it at a higher level. <laughs> Did we get uh, them all? Just no. There's one that's gone. I figured we should probably get you first. Which one is gone? Don't tell me it's that winter bitch. It's the older winter bitch. Great. Yes. It's um. You get another three, and there's. You want to step around the thing. Uh, very melted woman. You just want to step around that as we come through. That's yeah. I, I, don't, I know don't want to step in that. Don't, don't really want to. Uh, right. On top of that, how do you how do you look? How how are you feeling? I am currently just sort of leaning against the wall. Like I feel awful. So so here's here's an. An interesting prospect. How about us not searching for the grandmother and searching for a way out instead? I'm thinking if there is a castle and it is the same exact castle and I have this key, we should backtrack towards where that portal was. And maybe there's something there. <clears throat> How does that help anybody else? Uh-huh. How, how long does that ice wall last? Oh, just we could just break it. It's, it's a- I just, I mean, maybe can we I, can uh, rest. Before you do that, can I? Um, I'm going to. I'm going to also cast cure wounds on myself. Um, I, 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 sl- I slouch down next to the dead lady, and I, I reach through the table and try to find some food that's edible. Is there anything? I mean, yeah, there's definitely edible food around. There's, there's lots of peaches. Great, and just take- re- remains of the dessert that you found the eyeball in before. And I heal okay. ten points. Sorry. It's fine, Granny. I I was just say, well, if it, if anything, the ice the ice pillar is going to last roughly ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh. Right. Well. I'm ready. Oh, hold on. How are the rest of you? There's a refractory period for the rage. You just gotta give me a second. Oh. I think he's having a little migraine that happens a lot. Mm. He gets a little pumped up, and then it's it's like crashing from a high. Sure. Yeah. I'm good, buddy. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Well, I... Slipping, slip, slipping in a pool of blood on my way up, like, oh, it's good. Okay, okay. Are you sure he's going to be okay? He should be fine. It, it, it should be fine. Just a couple dry heaves, like... It's clearly steroids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that went well. I almost died. I'm just like slowly sliding down the wall to like a sitting position, just like totally wiped out from that. Missouri looks worse for the wear though. We probably need to take care of that too. Mm-hmm. Do I, have to I just, sorry, God. 
I mean, as you're in this room, you do notice that the air is starting to grow a little colder than it was when you first entered. And you can hear in the distance the wind picking up. Slowly. Sounds really nice. Wow. Reminds me of home. Also, the ringing in my ears, that reminds me of home, too. Ooh. Regardless of how it reminds you of home, anything anything that changes here and now, I am wary that it is that old hag that's doing it. So we should, we should probably get out of here as soon as possible. Uh, four of us, four on one, I think we could probably take her. Yeah, it's just, a, just an old lady. Is there anything on the other two? Oh, I mean, look. Is there anything Dar- Would you like to search the bodies? Yeah. Dargo starts are we, searching. Are we looting? Why not? It's like remaining of, of Gerda's melted body. I think I mean, we need all the help we can get. Of Gerda's body, not much remains aside from like this white dress sort of soaked in melted person goop yeah it's a lot of goop there wonderful and you know the remains of like a flower crown (laughs) i'm just gonna go over there and look over and it's like you know if you look at it in some angles it's like a lovely piece of art Mm. viri i thought that you slept with her that's what i thought was a whole thing no the way she was greeting it was like a i I didn't want to judge you uh, you, you could have. I don't think this is we an appropriate conversation to have right now, Gable. Ugh, well, I, I, I kind of like I, I crawl myself over to uh, uh, Missouri and uh, and 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 just kind of um, uh, I go. I am going to cure you. I'm going to do it by putting a hand on your shoulder. And I put a hand on her shoulder. Uh, you get. Uh, do you want to roll? Go ahead and roll it. Plus one. One d8 plus one. One d8 plus one. You're handing off your roll and like I don't want to roll. I don't want to roll my own healing spells. I'm not too, not too good for that. <laughs> I rolled a one. That's why. So they can't blame me. Two health. That's great. Awesome. Yeah, you got two HP back. Woohoo! Yes, but on on. I mean on. Uh, Darago, see if Mama had anything on her. Would you? On it. Uh, see. All right. He makes a disgusted face as he starts like trying to carefully look through the any so, so, anything any possessions uh, for her maybe an investigation check because I'm sure I know you, I'm sure you want to lovely you're a rogue I don't I well actually I do have it trained let's see what we got twenty one okay so you're proficient at the search procedures for corpses apparently which is you know. Any. It's that's not worrying at all. It's yeah. fine. So, I so, make so, the corpses. He said, "Just the corpses. It's a whole thing." Exactly. So searching over her body, you find she's not carrying any money. She is carrying um, this necklace with an eye in it. And she like an eye. actual, like like an image of an eye or an actual human eye. Like an eye that is now staring intently at you. Ha uh, ha 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 ha! Hello there. Uh, she's dead. Why are you talking to her? I'm not talking to her. I am talking to this, and he holds it up at, so that it's staring at Gable. Oh, ooh, oh. yes, oh. that's the appropriate reaction. <laughs> I'm getting the mental images of the spell book from Hocus Pocus with the eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? What is it? It's a. Uh... I don't know. Uh, Viri, would, would would you know anything about this? It's a magic y thing. Would I? Would I? Can I make, make a, a magic y thing check? Oh, great. Otherwise, that is our car. That is a natural 19. Ooh. Okay. So, you're aware that this, this is, um, this is a, an item that's. Hags are known to carry, and hag covens are known to have an eye, which 
allows the, the coven to watch over those that hold it in a perfectly benevolent and definitely evil way. Like, like, they, like this is a tool for a hag to watch you, and it's intrinsically tied to the magic that binds a coven together. A coven of hags being usually three hags. Do you really? I, I look at I look at the eye and immediately go. We should destroy it. The, that grandmother can see us through it. Ah, oh, excellent. Targa throws it on the ground. Uh, big guy, Gable, could you please stomp on this? Yes. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I go, I, I, like, um, I, I look at it. it. It's blinking at me. Stomp it doesn't on have it. any eyelids. It doesn't it. blink. It's just staring. It's, Great, it's yeah, I stomp, I stomp on that fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that is... That is rank. <laughs> um, I expected it to squirt. It splooshed. <laughs> it certainly did. It did. <laughs> you have an oh. eyeball on your shoe. Oh. oh. Okay. But that... Uh, that I grab a napkin carried... off the table. I'm just going to yeah. sit down. Since she was carrying that thing, I'm very sure that we're dealing with a coven of hags. We got two of them. There's still one out there. Yes. What do you suggest we do then? Stomp her. Colder. I have to agree that stomping her seems like the best option. See? Stomp her, that's what I'm saying. I don't trust her as far as I could throw her, which, let me tell you, is not very far. I could throw her so far, I still don't trust her. I don't want to try negotiating with a hag, yeah. and we outnumber her four to one. Our best option is just to get her out of the way. Agreed. Yeah. Wouldn't do it. Then, if that's the case, is everybody ready? Oh, it's just... <clears throat> I'm going to mm -hmm. hang it back, but yeah. Well, mm -hmm. All right, we're going on a hack hunt. Gable, would you this? dynamic exit? And then I'm going to point at the ice wall. Yeah, I lower my head and just, just bulldoze like juggernaut ram that thing. And you back out through to the courtyard with the flowers and the trees and the lovely... Ah! Oh, it, is, it is starting to snow now. I roll my eyes at Gable. Ugh, I don't pay attention. <laughs> yes. Now I turn around and see them all glaring at me. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going to walk. I agree. Okay. So back through into this courtyard. And now, yeah, there's definitely this soft fluttering of snow falling from a a sky that's still sunset colored, but darker tones of sunset. It's definitely sort of more purples and blues seeping in among the oranges and the reds. So, Vary's going to kind of look around, kind of remember where everything, like how we walked through the, the, the goblin version of the castle, and would be like, we should still probably head towards that portal. Maybe she's trying to get somewhere too. And I do still have a version of that key. Does anybody have any other ideas? That sounds like the best one I've heard. Seems reasonable to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Uh, dogs, all dogs are boys, all cats are girls. I've had this idea for a little while. I've been working what? it out. What? Okay, all right. Anyways, let's <laughs> continue on then. <laughs> all right. So you're heading onwards. Which, which way are you heading? Because directly ahead of you is another set of double doors that heads out into where originally you met the Goblin King in the alternate castle. Did this, this into like the slaughterhouse yes. area all yes. the way down here, and so yes. we're gonna yeah retrace retracing it. your steps as though you're in the Goblin Castle. Mm -hmm. So stepping through the door directly ahead, you find yourself in a room that's similar to the one that was the like the main grand hall of the goblin castle with several noticeable differences for starters it's not full of snow it has a roof it doesn't have a door like the goblin one had this grand 
front doorway leading to this bridge leading out of here. In this castle, it's just a wall. And also, there's a very large cage sat in front of it. Empty. Just a large cage. Rage in the cage. Rage in the cage. Rage in the cage. Zerago, could you could you help me look through, look over the room just in case before we move on? I don't want to miss anything here. Certainly. And is he? Why is he fixing? I'm, si- I'm, si- yeah, I'm sizing up the cage. I want to okay. fight. This thing. He's well, don't don't worry about him. Don't yeah. It's you fine. know what? That's a good idea. Yes, I'll take a look around. All right. So just taking a look around this room. Mm-hmm. Just around around the cage, or just around the room in general. Um, you know what? I I am also interested in the cage. Check. Okay. All right. You wanna you wanna get in the cage? Hmm? That is Probably a fifteen. Oh. All right. So I mean, the cage is a cage. It's it's got a lock on the outside. It's got some dubious blood stains on the inside, and otherwise, it's a very solid looking cage. The rest of the room, you. Again, it has the same patches of fungus growing from the walls here and there, like leaves and flowers forming a scattering across the floor. And two doors leading out of it. The one one to your left, one to the right. Neither of these doors are locked. And if you sort of push them open, there's definitely a give to them that you could walk through easily into either room. And you can hear something moving around from behind the left-hand door. And then, as you can hear here, The goblin. From behind the door. Uh, sounds sounds more. There she closer. is. There she is. We go bounding, boom, 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 towards the door. Towards this door. Okay. Towards the side was. Oh no. I get about. I get about there. <laughs> I don't want to be the one to open the door. So. Me neither. I'll I'll be like. Let's, yeah, go check it out, Gable. We'll, we'll be right behind yeah, you. You can do that if you want. Yeah, just like, just commit. Like, so you're committing? You're going through this door? Yeah, 100%. So, through this door, you find a, it appears to be a study slash workshop slash dubious substances potion making room. But most notably, instead of this room, there is a very startled peacock. Whoa! <laughs> flares all of its tail feathers up and just like makes a screeching noise as it backs away from you like oh. tail feathers waving trying to like got so many it's, eyes no, it's not the, those aren't eyes Gable they're feathers yeah he, he, he hearing Gable uh, freaking out and talking about eyes uh, uh, Dargo takes a peek fully expecting to see a beholder or something like that <laughs> You see a peacock. He just kind of stares. Don't look into its eye. I, uh... We should still shut the bird up. (laughs) As I kind of like... We also shut him up. Gable, deep breaths. You're fine. It's really really scared me. I know, it's fine. You'll be fine. You shit out of me. I was like, I was like... This is really bad. Yeah, it's okay. All right, it's fine. I go back I'm to the gonna, cage. I'm going to step around. inside and uh, try and and just edge past the uh, horrible, ferocious peacock. Uh, Make an animal handling check, please. Oh God, no! <laughs> Look. No, damn it! All right, let's see what we got. Eleven. As you sort of edge, so you're edging into the room or out of the room? Into the room. As, as you edge further in the room, this peacock lunges for you with all its peacock viciousness. No. That is a 19 to hit from the peacock. That actually and hits me, yes, of course. You take two points of damage. My as God. His beak pecks into you. <laughs> Ow! You little bastard! And his angry peacock backs off a few steps. 
Oh my gosh, this thing. Um, <laughs> reach for my rapier. <laughs> you have a rapier? I do have a rapier. I haven't used it, but I haven't. <laughs> I just kind of, I don't attack it, but I just kind of like... Ugh. I could skewer it, you. You know, I'm feeling a little hungry. Vessels. I've never tasted peacock. I Make an intimidation walk. check. Tis, I have never been more happy to be your friend than seeing you snarl as a peacock staring down a person with a sword. Like, 19. just like... This is a... The peacock sort of lowers its feathers. Makes sense. Yeah, damn right. Get away from me. All right. I'm going to go for the... Uh, I'm going to go check out the, the table. Every once in a while, glancing over my shoulder at the peacock. Yeah, so uh, passing over this table, it's covered with a scattering of like notes and diagrams in the way of... So there's sort of some potions that appear to be in the progress of being made. Also, the pages of what appears to be like a medical dissection textbook, specifically quite focused on humanoids. Oh, wonderful. And humans, elves, dwarves, and you know, exactly what happens when you peel back the skin, and also the best way to cook various parts of them. Mm, to serve man. Mm, exactly. I'm, I'm going to look over his shoulder and be like, do you think any of those goblins actually figured out how to do any of those serving goblins up, like this book says? I, I don't think those goblins had books on it. I think they just did it. Just can goblins even read? I mean, there's that's pictures. what I'm saying. There's a lot of pictures, though. Very okay. good. Look, all right. I'm gonna. Uh, so is that? The books are the most interesting thing there, is that right? Depends what you're interested in. There's books, there's potions. Potions, okay. Potions are interesting, especially if any of them are of the healing variety. Well, I mean, there's various potions that look like they're in the process of being making. Most noticeably, there are two bottles that are corked and sealed up with labels attached and everything. Oh, what do the labels say? Drink me. Great, yeah, of course. Sorry. Some Alice in Wonderland shit. Very helpful. Which one? Which one makes me big? Which one makes me small? Where's the mushrooms? I'm just getting. Just Are getting there big. cookies too? The There's key? no sign of any cookies. Just these two bottles, both labeled. Drink me. Uh, from 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 the other room. What? You guys got cookies? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I don't. What color me. is the liquid? The liquid. Is clear and in the very center of it, there's just a small bead of red, and it's just, it just seems to be shrinking. And the more you watch it, it's still shrinking forever and ever. I don't, I don't like that. Ever. Do you think that grandma is, is in uses cage for something? Some sort of fight, I, I don't know. I think it's very likely that the cage was used for something, yes. It's not just there for decoration. Okay. I still right. vote for not drinking those potions, and I vote for moving on. I'm going to swipe the potions regardless. I'm not going to drink them, but I'll keep Sounds them. good. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll move on, I guess. So, with, with, with one final uh, moment of uh, Dargo turning to the peacock and hissing at it. Yeah. It it's, 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 it's not your friend. This is not your friend. No. No, it's not. I'm walking across the door, uh, the room, but the first, the last thing I'm saying would be like, Dargo, you should probably close the door so that that thing doesn't run off or peck you again. You can put it in the cage. Why don't we put you in a cage? I'm sorry. I, didn't I mean would it. love didn't to mean be in a cage. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. We're not. That was not an offer. That was not a sincere offer. Mama and her friends were an illusion, weren't they? Maybe we should put the peacock in the cage just to be on the safe side. I, I don't want to screw with the peacock. I can just close the door. Peacock. I go. I go bounding by, and I go and grab this thing. 
I don't know what he No, no, All we right. don't put, put it. Game. Make a grapple check against this peacock. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. We're, gonna, uh, okay. We're doing this. Is, is the cage locked? Gable, you now are holding a peacock. Oh, okay. Is, is, is the cage locked? Is the cage locked down? Uh, yes. Does it have a top? Okay. So to prevent him from just shouldering it open and making a bunch of noise, I'm going to quickly try to pick it open with my thieves tools. Yeah, go for it. Make, uh, okay. Can I? So, I'm going to name it Scratchy because it's like Scratchy. It's more pecking than scratching, but yeah. It's... Ooh, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. It keeps it looking at me. <laughs> that is a 14. <laughs> it's not the most elaborate of locks. You can definitely get this lock open by, at this point, like, Gable's only taking a few minor scratches for, and pecks from this peacock. Right. I think it, if, if, if it ends up being a friend, then I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to like me. It is not a friend. You can just put it in the cage now. It's okay. It's a bird. Please put it in the cage and we'll be done here. Around the wings. Just yeah. and slam it shut. Oh. Are we good? It Are we done now? A mournful peacock noise. I, I will. I refuse to make proper peacock noises because it is <laughs> three in the morning. And some DM you are unbelievable. <laughs> no, I know. Right, we've put the peacock in the cage. Right out of my house. Move on now. Yes. There are other places we can go. All right. The peacock, having been safely restrained, let me just pop this peacock in the cage. I'll push one of that. Peacock having been restrained, you head onwards. Yes, we head to the, uh, I would like to head to this other room. So heading into the other room, you find another, another little office room. Uh, this one has, it has a large bearskin rug on the floor, a very elaborate desk of maps and drawings, the very like fancy looking chair behind it. And notably this room, unlike the other one, has a, has a second door off it, heading down to what was previously goblin settlements and goblin kitchens in the goblin version of the castle. Hey, hey as we're in there, I, I was just, hey, Ms. Eerie. What? Can I, can I borrow your dad? Or... Why? I just want to leave a, I want to sign something. Sign something with a dagger? Mm-hmm. Give it right back. She pulls mm -hmm. it out of her boot. Whoa! I, wow! You're, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I go over and just in the top of the desk, I just uh, Gable was here, and I, 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 I can only assume it's like badly misspelled. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm just gonna look over. And How do you misspell walls like W O Z? Like it's uh, already misspelled. I just, it's just Gable W, and he's like, then here, W Z. <laughs> Gable was here. Yeah. That's not how you spell here, or was, or Gable. Gable's right, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thought that matters that I hate. Give me my dagger. <sighs> right, so I'm going to check over the desk. Okay. So uh, can... Especially the maps to try and figure out maybe where we are, if there's a hint. Where specifically? The maps on the desk make, make me a history check. No. Yeah. Please. All right. That's a 16. So the maps, some of them you're familiar with in terms of maps of lands you're, you've traveled in and ventured in. But a lot of them appear to be historic maps. Maps from 100, 200, 300 even older. Uh, years before you've ever been around and adventuring and but none of them look old like all the maps look new but they're maps of kingdoms long lost empires that have sunk into the sea since have been destroyed by dragons but the maps fresh ink look like the ink only dried yesterday <laughs> those are pretty some of them seem to be of, well, they depict ancient places, but... None of them have Castlevania marks on them. Oh... Are we there? Um, they all seem new, and none of them have the castle. 
depicted on oh. them. So the you're telling me you're in a different time again. I'm not telling you that. I'm just telling you what the maps say. Well, I'm Personally, I think this that. time travel stuff is completely nuts. Agreed. I'm, f I'm from the Feywild. Time is relative. Let's... That is what she said. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Time is your relative? Like your cousin? No, no. <laughs> don't, don't even worry about it. Let's go. Okay, sorry. So outside, you can hear the wind is picking up as the temperature drops and sort of frost starting to form on the stones. As whatever warmth or summeriness that's keeping this castle is... Winter is coming. Sorry, 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 I said that wrong. Winter is coming. And as as you move through the next room, you see that intermingled with the, the leaves on the floor, you see yeah, um, drifts of snow drifting in through the winter window. So I've got winter on the brain now. Drifting in through the window. And the door ahead of you is standing slightly ajar. So, heading onwards, what would you like to do? No, uh, I, I, it's not standing slightly ajar. I'm going to use Thaumaturgy and it's going to fly open. <laughs> this door crashes open and to reveal a, an, an empty room. Hey, very Beyond. Hmm. You and know about dragons. That, that locked door. Is what it about it? Possible that Grandma is the dragon? Is it possible that hags and dragons have anything to do with each other? Mm. My in my knowledge. In your experience, make a make a make a history check. Great. For hag dragon knowledge. Hag dragon. Oh, that sounds <laughs> terrifying. Eighteen. You're thankfully, as far as you're aware, there is no such thing as a hag dragon, luckily. But there is a drag hag, and that's a that's a <laughs> that's a hag that hangs out with a bunch of gay dragons. <laughs> <laughs> but also, that dragons and hags do not like hags are creatures generally of the fae, whereas dragons are their own thing. And apart from some weird fairy dragons, they don't tend to overlap and mingle that much or be particularly allied in your experience and when the rare dragonness and fainness cross over you get very very strange occurrences and weird people yeah. with weird powers usually okay, called fairy <laughs> thank you very much for being called weird that many times no well yeah, the thing is, um, the, the hags are fey they don't really mingle with dragons that much and I think the one tr maybe true thing that they've ever said was if we did help slay the dragon, that they are pretty happy about that. Now, me losing all of my memories and all of this does make me think that maybe even the dragon part of it is completely fictional. But we have it on a piece of paper that we are to slay a dragon, not that we have slain the dragon. But there is no hags and dragons mingling. That grandma can't be a dragon. But, but in the future, or the past, or wherever we were when we thought we slayed the dragon, when we were a hundred years post-dragon slaying, I had- What date on the maps? Anyways, Was there a date on the maps? As in, um, some of them are dated, yes. I mean, they're dated, some of them match up with the year you're familiar with. Some of them match up with years, anything from 10 years past to a thousand years past. But curiously, there are some that you're not familiar with who appear to be in what you would consider the future. <sighs> 
of your time. Just a couple that seem to be dated sort of 20, 50 years ahead of the time as you're familiar with it. What did the map say? They just, they have places on them. The future ones seem to be unfamiliar. Oh. There are future ones too. So we're pretty much not back in our time. We are in a place that exists outside of time. So this probably is somewhere in the, in the Feylands. Something like that. Yes. <sighs> okay. The land of plenty, the goblins called it. Yeah. Well, the land of plenty is getting colder. I look at the window and the snow blowing in. We need to get to that portal. And is the door right in front of me? And I'm, am I holding the key? Or can I still? Yes, it is. The door is directly in front of you and you have the key. And I go to open the door and I remember. The door is not locked. Charmed it is. And I was like, and it's not locked. And I was like, I guess I don't need this. Shall we? And then I'm going to slowly open the door. The door swings open, and ahead of you, for a brief moment, you see a hideous visage staring back at you from the center of this circle. (laughs) I'll see you on the other side, and then... (sighs) Grandmother is gone. And there's a circle lies ahead of you. And it's weird, you don't feel the pull from this side. Like, it's it's a circle, it's there, but you don't feel the same magnetic draw towards it that you felt before. So I kind of look at the circle, then look at everybody else and be like, okay, is it just me or is, is, is the castle safe now? Should we actually take a rest? She's gone for now. I agree. Okay. Let's just wait here. Uh, she's, yeah. she's, you know... She said she'd see us on the other side. I assume she'll wait for us. We're... Uh, yeah, she, she'll be patient. Yes, of course. <sighs> oh, and then I'm just going to like just sit down on the floor. Or, like, is that a crate right there, right, right next to the circle? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to sit on that crate. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna sit down on this crate. You wait. It's, it's still, the air is growing colder still. It's bitter, mm. bitter ice around. Does anyone have any blankets? I think we probably can't stay any longer here either. I mean, are you, are you all in this room now? Someone wanted to go see a peacock, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we were all there and then I'll be like, where's Gable? Gable, 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 come back. Okay. Yep. As you, who's gonna feed it? As you wait in this room, the four of you. Oh no! What? As you wait in this room, you can hear footsteps from oh, outside no. the door. Well, at least I have someone to feed the peacock. I was worried. I'm just going to close the steps drawing closer. I'm glad you have your priorities straight. The door swings open and you see smiling in the doorway is the grandmother. But not as you'd seen her briefly a moment ago, sort of haggard and tattered and furious looking. She looks, she looks calm, serene as she did when you first saw her at the dinner table. She goes, well now, I didn't expect you to still be here. Uh, And she raises her hand. I'm gonna use thaumaturgy to slam the door in her face. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) The door slams in her face. You hear her, her reaching for the handle. What would you like it's to do? Fine. I, like, I, I, hold it, hold it, Gable. This is as far as I, I thought the plane. This is as far as I, I thought the plane. 
Strength check, Gable. Can I take the key and lock the door? Yeah, uh, 25. Yeah, so as, as Gable's holding the door shut, yeah, very, you can lock the door. Yeah, I'm gonna take the key that I have, I'm just gonna lock the door. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I haven't thought that far out either, so what are we gonna do? We have to go, we have to go through the yeah. portal. Circle? The circle, whatever you wanna call it. The gateway. Yeah, if there's Coming. multiple times, there could be oh, multiple keys. Uh, okay. okay, okay. Unless we really want to fight this woman. Get out of here, alive. And sure there could be another one of her waiting on the other side. So many grandmas. There's one of her waiting here. Let's just go for the evil that we don't know. I, I, I don't know. That's a well, figure that actually sounds like a terrible idea now that I say it out loud. As I, yeah, as I, um, uh, I kind of did the door, like the door is locked, and I just kind of inch my way towards the circle and just boogie my way into it. You're stepping into the circle. Fuck yeah! I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be thinking about it. I was like, I need to get out. So of here the rest of you, as you're debating and considering, you see Gable sort of move away from the door and step into the circle. <sighs> Gable is gone. Son. Right, where the muscle goes, I go. Indeed. I'm going to jump into this door. The handle of the door starts to bend and twist under the strength of whoever's turning on this side. I look at the air, go, I just shrug and step into the circle. Yep. Jump into the circle after her. Very. Yep, yeah. I was going in. Through the circle. All right. So. Mari, you come slowly to consciousness and wakefulness, slowly, moment by moment. And you look around and you see you're in this, this room and it appears to be some kind of ruined castle. There's snow on the ground. The walls are broken stone crumbling down with age the ceiling mostly missing around you you see you see Mazari and you see you know you don't know Mazari. you see Gable who you're familiar with you see two strange figures and a drow and a human but who don't seem familiar to you I mean you know Gable you were going to do something you're sure you were but you you can't remember how you got here you can't remember why you're here and sl- uh, or where you've been for the last month of your life. And slowly, slowly around you, all four adventurers I'm gonna awake. kick Gable. the memory of what they're doing here and why they're here lost. I told you, I told you don't drink that beer, man. And it was really gonna be bad. Yes, I know. It's just get up. I'm gonna mm. kick him in the bedroom. And slowly, as and as Vary kicks Gable awake, Morning and you begin sunshine. looking round at this strange and unfamiliar castle. That's where we're going to end, I believe. <laughs> <laughs>